Okay, so magandang, magandang, magandang umaga. Hapon po sa ating lahat. We are now live sa ating official Facebook page. Deped tayo, SDO Mandalu, yung city. So this is isa na naman pong napakagandang session ang inihahati po sa atin ng Schools Division Office, City of Mandaluyong. Sa panguna po ng ating OIC, uh, Office of the Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Romela M. Cruz. Sa pakikipagtulungan ng ating ASDS, uh, Dr. Alfonso, Dr. Aurelio G. Alfonso, and our uh, CID Chief, Dr. Aline G. Mendoza, and our supervisor in education program supervisor in mathematics, Mr. Instituto Airo Delas, and our education program supervisor in science, we have Ma'am Roxanne S. Villanueva. So, kamusta po tayong lahat? Alam ko po tayo po ay excited po ngayon sa ating ginagawa at talagang alam na po natin na this is isa na lamang punong-puno ng kaalaman ang iyahatid po sa atin ng SDO Mandaluyong City. So, nas, kapasin niyo po medyo kailangan po magmask kasi ako po ay nasa labas po ng office so kailangan magmask for safety purposes po. The novel coronavirus has instantly changed the way education is delivered given that school and home have now become the same place due to necessary regulations put into effect. According to UNESCO, more than 861 million children and young people in 119 countries have been affected by having to deal with the global pandemics, pandemic that has shaken us this year. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are lucky as we have this another milestone in the SDO Mandaluyong as we push the boat out on this makeshift math and science for flexible teaching and learning. Dear teachers, my dear colleagues, our teachers from all over the country, members of SDO Mandaluyong, our unrelenting and dynamic mentors, welcome to our makeshift webinar on math and science for flexible teaching and learning. To formally start our program, let us all pay respect as we sing the Philippine National Anthem. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Today, to meet and share our knowledge 
spend time with one another in this webinar. May you extend your divine wisdom to our speakers so that they would be able to impart effectively their God-given knowledge to all of us. May they be blessed as they continue to bring their expertise to the people who need them. Please bless the participants as well so that they would be able to glean the vital information from this activity. May you bestow your blessings after this webinar so that we may go out and spread what we learn in the spirit of your love and generosity. May we realize that this activity should glorify your name. Okay, so ayan, so kamusta ang lahat? I hope we are all enjoying sa ating ginagawa ngayong araw na to because uh, napakaswerte natin because isa sa mga pinaka-active na SDO Mandaluyong sa, ng SDO sa buong Pilipinas pagdating sa pag-provide ng mga professional development avenues for teachers lalo na ngayong webinar na ito ay ang SDO Mandaluyong dahil na rin sa suporta ng ating mga nagpipitagan at magagaling na leader ng SDO Mandaluyong City. To become a leader, you must first become a human being, said Confucius more than 2,500 years ago. In the famous Great Learning, Confucius lays out a developmental theory in terms of seven meditative spaces of leadership. Find parallel in wisdom traditions around the world. Indeed, wisdom itself is the oldest ideas associated with leadership. At this point, let us all welcome and be inspired with the message to be given to us by our very dynamic and supportive education program supervisor in mathematics. Let us all welcome Mr. Restituto I. Rodelas. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Bads. Thank you so much. Okay. So to our OIC, yeah, to our OIC SDS, Dr. Romela M. Cruz, to our OIC ASDS, the new member of the SDO family, Dr. Aurelio Alfonso, uh, to our Chief Education Supervisor for Curriculum Implementation Division, Dr. Aline G. Mendoza, to our Chief Education Supervisor of School Governance and Operation Division, Ma'am Emma Rubio, to my partner, to my partner, uh, uh, Ma'am Roxanne Villanueva, the Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics, uh, in Science, I'm sorry. So, uh, good afternoon to everyone, to all math teachers and science teachers who are watching us right now. Good afternoon po. Uh, so, welcome to Cloud again for another webinar on blended learning. So, this time, generously provided by Casio Philippines. We still have a month to go before school opening, and that still uh, give us ample time to prepare and make ourselves adept with the new teaching modalities in this new normal. So it will never be easy because it is a new territory, but with our resolve and dedication, we will uh, we will make it there. So stay in the stay in there for the next of. Uh, for the for the rest of the webinar. So thank you and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much, Sir Resti, for that very wonderful message. At this juncture, let us listen to a lady who serves as the strength of all the science coordinators in SD Omandaluyo. She is an embodiment of fairness, a woman of character and confidence who exudes enthusiasm and bringing out the best in every person that she meets. Distinguished guests, dear friends, colleagues, please join me in welcoming our Education Program Supervisor in Science, Ma'am Roxanne S. Villanueva. Hello. 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 Thank you, Sir Babs. And good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to our um, officials from the Department of Education, Mandaluyong. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. And also, good afternoon to Sir Resti, ang partner. Talaga naman nga partner, ang math and science. 
with math being the tool that we use para sa mga science concepts natin. Today is July 24, 2020, and a month to go before we open our school year. From being clueless in March on how to deal with continuing learning to our transition plans in April, and then to our crafted learning continuity plans and service continuity plans in May, we have armed ourselves with information as we know that to deal with the unknown, this being an unknown territory for all of us, it is just fitting to keep ourselves informed. We see how professional development activities have become such an open market of exchange of ideas, and we are eternally grateful for this. We see a lot of webinars from different um, resource speakers, and they have really helped us in understanding the new normal. And this afternoon is another testament to this professional growth that we have been seeing this past months. We are very um, lucky, siguro fortunate talaga, in SDO Mandaluyong that we have partnered with Casio Philippines in delivering this webinar to you. So sit back, relax, learn a lot. And as you know, as we go on with our different activities for the opening of the school year, our crafting of the different weekly plans, kailangan nating magkaroon ng diverse set of um, learning activities that can help us in teaching our learners in the new manner. So good afternoon, and uh, let's enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Ma'am Roxanne. In a book written by Jim Collins, From the God, From Good to Great, and I quote, those who build great companies understand that the ultimate throttle and growth for any great company is not markets, or technology, or competition, or products. It is one thing above all others, the ability to get and keep enough of the right people. In the context, he is an epitome of the right person for the right job. Let us all welcome our assistant officer in charge, office of the schools, assistant division superintendent, Dr. Aurelio G. Alfonso. Hello, sir. Good afternoon po. Ayan, so I think uh, we're just having some problems with Sir with Dr. Alfonso. So um, let's wait. Okay, so I think... Ayan. So, while waiting for our uh, ASDS, uh, let's proceed with our next uh, uh, next uh, speaker na pag deliver sa atin ang message. To become a leader, you must first become a human being, said Confucius more than 2,500 years ago in the, in the famous uh, Great Learning. Confucius lays out developmental theory in terms of seven mitigative spaces of leadership. These ideas find parallels in wisdom traditions around the world. Indeed, wisdom itself is one of the oldest ideas associated with leadership. We are truly fortunate that today we shall be afforded that rare chance, a privilege to drink from the fountain of wisdom of this lady. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the lady behind the success of SDO Mandaluyong, and I quote, Batang Mandunong, walang maiiwan, kabahagi ng bilang, our assistant schools division superintendent, officer in charge, office of the schools division superintendent, Dr. Lomela M. Cruz. Hello, Thank you ma very much. Thank you very much, Sir Wad, for uh, that uh, generous introduction. Yes, Congratulations sa buong uh, CID, especially sa kanilang chief, Ma'am Aline, at sa mathematics supervisor, Sir Resti. At uh, andyan din ngayon kasama natin ang ating uh, assistant superintendent, um, Sir um, Aurelio Alfonso. Ang tawag natin sa kanya ay Sir Aga. Kasi yung Aga, Aurelio G. Alfonso. Sir, andito na po ba kayo? Sir Bats, pakitingin mo nga kung nasa line na si Sir Aga. Hello, 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 Sir Aga. Hello,
Yes, Mama. Okay. Sir, Aga, ma Good. So we are complete as a family. My mother, my father, at maraming children. Good afternoon to all. Sa lahat po ng aming mga kasamang district supervisors, division supervisors, kumusta po kayo? Hindi sila mathematics, ibang area sila, pero andyan siya. Andyan sila lahat. At yung nagsalita kanina ay Sayan, si Ma'am Roxanne. Regardless of the subject area that they excel or they handle, everybody supports the CID endeavors. Thank you very much and congratulations to all. So, so uh, sa ating mga kaibigan sa Casio Philippines, maraming marami pong salamat sa advokasya, sa suporta ninyo, sa batang mandunong, walang may iwan, kabahagi ng bilang. At Sir Bad, kahit ikaw ay nakadetain dyan sa central office, thank you very much sa time mo and effort mo, anak. Sa ating lahat, everybody is working, ano? everybody is working, joining in this journey towards academic excellence, especially in mathematics. Congratulations. Grabe ang soft skills ng inyong bisor. Uh, Napaka-creative, uh, resourceful, kung saan pwedeng kumuha ng resources at marami siyang friends. Thank you very much, Sir Resti. Keep up the good work. At sa lahat ng mga bisor na narito, suposuporta lang sila kahit hindi sila mat. Andiyan ang kanilang mga presidente, si Sir Net Nature sa EPS at si Sir Jet sa PSDS. Sila ay hindi nagpapahinga para sa mga batang mandalenyo. Thank you very much, Ma'am Aline. Continue your uh, exemplary performance as CID Chief. Okay, sa lahat po ng mga guru natin kasama sa mat, kumusta po kayo? Excited na po ba kayo na magturo? Kung ano man po yung matutuhan nyo ngayon, apply agad. Hanapin ang relevance at uh, hanapin din ang reality nito sa pagtuturo. Kaya sa mga mathematics teacher, alam nyo po ba ito? I would like to share this to you. I got this from the internet. Mathematics, this subject may not teach us how to breathe oxygen, and how to exhale carbon dioxide, or to love a friend and forgive an enemy. It may not even help us find our way to our one true love, but it gives us every reason to hope that every problem has a solution. Kaya kapag ikaw ay math teacher, math supervisor, ang ngiti, hanggang tenga, bakit? Palagi silang believer, advocate, that for every problem, there is a solution. Ladies and gentlemen, sa lahat ng aming mga gurong kasama, department head, master teachers, bisor, lahat ng lovers of mathematics, you must be proud because all of you are problem solvers. Okay? Solution advocates, pagharap sa principal, pagharap sa department head, solution ang ino-offer at hindi problema. So, I expect everyone that whatever you learn from this training, expect you to apply immediately in your real life. There's no difference between uh, the real life and the uh, um, experiences in the classroom. Because whatever we do in the classroom, it's applicable to real life. So, hindi sineseparate yung life and learning. They are intertwined. They are inseparable. Learning and life, double L. Kapag may learning, may life. Bakit hindi okay ang life? Walang learning every day. So sa inyong lahat na narito sa seminar na ito, immediately apply what you're going to learn. Happy learning to all. Congratulations to the CID family. Salamat sa inyong unity as one family. Thank you very much to all. Keep up the good work, CID. Congratulations, Ma'am Aline, Resti, and all supervisors, district and division. Marami pong salamat. Ingatan niyo pong ating sarili. Mas malhalahaga po ang buhay. Sobrang halaga ng buhay over anything else. Thank you very much po sa friends namin sa Casio. May God bless us. Thank you, Buds. Thank you, Ma'am Romela, for that uh, message. So, ayan, ganyan po talaga. If we, are ha if we are having our live webinar, meron tayo mga <laughs> hindi inasa na technical difficulties, but let's assure we're trying to make everything na magagawa namin to make this webinar a smooth one. So, now let us now listen to the person behind the digitization of some of the processes in the curriculum and implementation division. She's not just a mother for her children, but a mother for all of us who are gathered here in this webinar. She treats everyone equally and respects the idea 
of each and every one of us. She is working tirelessly on every project, programs given to her. A certified CI master and a public servant, an epitome of a true leader, let us all welcome our Chief Curriculum Implementation Division, Dr. Aline G. Mendoza. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Hello, Sir Baz. Yes ko, nakakatuwa naman yung inyong introduction. Thank you so much. It's very kind. Of course, uh -oh. of course, I would like to greet our OICSDS just delivered yung kanya na pala ng mensahe kay Dr. Romel M. Cruz. Ang ating OICESDS, si Dr. Will Alfonso. Our SGOD Chief, Ma'am Emma Rubio. Lahat ng supervisors, education program supervisors headed by the two uh, education specialists natin dito na si Mr. Rest Tuto Rodelas at of course, Ma'am Roxanne Villanueva, sila yung mga uh, promoter nito. Of course, sa lahat ng mga PSDSS around, thank you for your support. Lahat ng school heads na attending this webinar, sa lahat ng ating teachers sa Mandaluyong, especially to all our Dear teachers ng Mathematics and Science, good afternoon sa inyo and thank you for taking time to attend this webinar. To our friends or benefactor always, Casio, hindi mo kami nakakalimutan lagi since I, I've been the supervisor, you've been part of the SDO Mandaluyong, thank you so much. And our Casio technical teachers, thank you for considering us, the Mandaluyong teachers, for your uh, mga, mga ganitong programa. So, Ms. Redeline Yumol from the University of Santo Tomas, and of course, Mr. Alphonse Jason Ogoni of Philippine Normal University. Thank you, guys. This is very important to us. Thank you for being, uh, having you all always in our division to enhance our teachers. Okay, um, the title of this webinar is Make Shift Math and Science for Flexible Learning, Teaching. Learning and Teaching. So the main objective is that we would like to um, provide us some kind of overview of different utilization of apps, blended learning for our mathematical concept development and uh, processes. Like for example, your know, mathematical reasoning and visual thinking, which is very one of the uh, I mean most challenging competency competencies in our mathematics and science subject. Uh, so, Resti, thank you for initiating this webinar and having our friends from Casio to be part of this one. It's very important to our teachers na having been in this kind of, sabi na natin nga, um, new, better, normal, positively speaking, um, we have some people willing to, to give us orientation on based on their studies that we can explore more, especially when we have this uh, this kind of yung, yung ating bagong milk for us to, to implement. Kasi we, we need to, to, to blend. We need to blend this kind of approaches and applications and to our um, milk uh, competencies, some math and science. So we're so happy having you. Um, please enjoy, please give your, your, your time, your, your, your positivity of welcoming new applications. So huwag tayong matatakot na bago na naman to. Kasi ang sabi nga niya, no? Ang sabi ng yung binabasa ko ngayong ano na uh, one of the one of the secrets daw ng isang isang prepared na person or a leader is that to have to prepare the mission. Ang SDO Mandalu yung ngayon is so busy preparing our people, our teachers, our leaders. So starting from the materials development, up to the application of the or the use of the learning um, management system hanggang doon sa mga applications to be implemented in the classroom. So let's be prepared mentally and physically. Uh, the, the future, which is around mga ilang araw na lang, one month to, to count, uh, we will be starting our, our new, new, new life, new world, and this kind of uh, process. So people around like itong taga Casio, the SDO were here to help support. Kung ano man yung mga, uh, mga offered nila, we will be uh, accepted as 
sabi nga natin kanina, chalice, sabi, na, sabi ng kasyo is let's make shift. So baguhin natin kasi we have a new way of doing things because of the limitations of this kind of pandemic that we are experiencing now. So flexible learning is another option. Uh, though ang ating SDO is talking about a modular uh, distance learning, there's one offer here, flexible learning approach that could also be one kind of opportunity for us to explore na baka naman mas ma-enjoy din natin of having it in an online process. Although, sa data natin, they're only 50%, almost 50% will be possible to come up or to be uh, implementing online. But then let's not be limited on what is just offered in our division. So flexible learning is also a pedagogical approach allowing for flexible time place and audience, not in sinasabi yung synchronous, asynchronous could be applied here. So with the aid of technologies and other uh, other options or modalities could be, could be applied here. So flexible learning is also welcome in our division. So we just be, ano na lang, kung sino ang po pwede, uh, based on our data, ang ating mga learners, they could also be considered in um, considering our approach kasi baka hindi naman maging capable ng ating mga learners on this. And we'll be asking also our parents who will be our learning partner in their in their respective uh, mga tahanan. Kaya, but then, this offer is still be welcome here. So, enjoy natin. Sabi ni Ma'am kanina, uh, what is the reality? Relevant? Please apply. Kung ano ang pwede, i-apply. Ano ang relevant, i-apply agad. Kasi sayo ang learning kung hindi magagamit to the actual world. Okay? Ang sabi, ni, ang sabi ni Albert Einstein, the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. So we are now uh, changing, though uh, we are pushed to change actually because of the circumstances. It's just because itong lahat ng attempt to are all sa ating teaching learning process is we are very exploring at Oh, we are having this attempt to explore more, to be more open to opportunities or probability for us to make our teaching learning process enjoyable to our learners, lalo pag math and science. So to all um, intelligent Mandaluyong teachers, please welcome this kind of opportunity and learning. So enjoy learning and happy learning, everyone. Good day, everyone. No, hello. Yan, thank you po, Dr. Aline G. Mendoza for the message. So, indeed, talagang sinabi ni sa atin ng ating CID chief na on this uh, new normal in education, hindi lang naman tayo puro modular, hindi lang tayo puro face-to-face. -face. We need to utilize different learning modalities such as modular, blended learning approach, online learning approach. And ito mga ginagawa natin ngayon, ito yung mga kamaraanan or applications that we can use to deliver quality education to our learners. So ngayon, let us now proceed with our first speaker. He is a graduate of University of Rizal with bachelor's degree in secondary education major in mathematics. He earned his master of arts in edu she earned his ma her master of arts in mathematics at Ateneo de Manila University and currently he is pursuing her doctorate degree, Doctor of Philosophy in Education in Mathematics Education at University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. She's been involved in delivering different seminars on related to mathematics and integrating technology in teaching. Let us all welcome our first speaker, a mathematics ABM teacher at the University of Santa Tomas Senior High School Department, Ma'am Redilin Subiaga Yumul. Hello, Ma'am. Good afternoon. Hi, sir. <laughs> Good Hello, afternoon, po. Hello, po. Good afternoon, Ma'am. So, sige, Hi. Ma Ayan po. I'll give. Ah, okay na po, sir? Yes, Ma'am. Ah, sige po. So, begin na po ako. Okay, so uh, once again, good afternoon everyone. So, before I begin, I hope you prepare your Casio Classes Calculator or Emulator for this webinar since we will be using that a lot today. 
And uh, uh, it is also best if you have downloaded Casio Edu Plus app in your cell phone. Okay. So why is class risk calculator an an effective alternative tool in teaching mathematics in a distance learning setup because number one it is one of the basic ICT that does not require or may not require internet connection so it is applicable to any modality so the only time that you'll need internet internet connection is when you are concerned with graphs so let's say you will graph uh, equation with you'll graph equation or let's say histogram or scatter plot so I'll give examples later okay um, number two, so since computation is easier with class ways, then we mathematic, mathematics teachers can maximize this opportunity by constructing questions, especially word problems, that promote higher order thinking skills of our students. So we should always remember that our goal in math is to develop problem solving and critical thinking skills of our students. And finally, class with calculator has some features of a graphing calculator. So that is what we'll explore today. So, so yung mga uh, features of Casio calculator that are applicable for uh, senior high school and junior high school mathematics. All right. Okay. So in total, so the Casio class with has 12 features or 12 uh, menu functions. And given this 12, we will apply nine. Okay. So we will start with calculate. So for calculate, so just take note also that the corresponding number, so ito po yung ipepress natin kapag gagamitin natin, number or letter. Okay. So let's proceed to calculate. Yeah. So for calculate, one application is when you do conversion. So assuming you will convert 40 degrees Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So how can we use the Casio class with in converting this one? All right. So I'll show you here the steps. So again, I mentioned a while ago that this is applicable to any modality. So whether you are applying or you will be using online class, so pwede po kayong gumamit ng emulator. And if you will going or if you're going to use module, then you can just indicate the steps that the students can follow. All right. So again, so we will convert 40 degrees Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So we will just follow these steps. So using the emulator, we will key in 40 and then we press shift and then 8. So if you could notice, dun sa 8 button may nakalagay sa taas na conversion. And then we will look for the appropriate option, which is temperature. And then press 2. And then we press the equal sign. All right. So meaning to say the 40 degree Celsius is equal or equivalent to 104 degree, 104 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. So you can try this one. Once the students already know how to use this conversion uh, feature of a calculate, then probably you can give a more difficult problem or a word problem just like this one. So if I may read, so the speed of the car used by Rainier is 54 kilometers per hour, while the car used by Rafael travels 12 meters per second. So which car is faster? How much faster in meters per second? So. Uh, the student should realize, alin ba dito yung i-convert? Is it the 54 kilometers per hour or the 12, me 12 meters per second? So since you have the second question automatic, the students should know that the first one, the 54 kilometers per hour, should be converted to meters per second. All right. So again, using the calculator or the emulator, so we will type 54 and then shift 8 for conversion and then we look for velocity so that's button one and then we press one again and then equal sign that's it okay so meaning to say Rainier's car is faster than Raphael's car by uh, three meters per second okay so I just hope you can follow Second, so another application of the calculate men uh, menu of the class with is when you do random sampling. So for example, in a class of 40 students, you will choose nine students at random who will participate in an activity. So you will use the class number of the students. But if I may, I, I do not recommend this um, as a replacement for index cards, especially kapag yung iba gumagamit ng index cards sa, ano, sa recitation. Kidding aside, so let's proceed. 
So here is the uh, steps that we can follow. So we will press alpha and then dot. Then we input 1 to 4. So 1 and then yung comma nasa close parenthesis button. So we will press first shift, close parenthesis, and then we input 40. And then close parenthesis. And then we'll just press equal sign nine times. So 6, 10, 18, 8, 20, 2. So press lang po sa equal sign. There you go. Okay. Next, another application of the calculate menu or uh, calculate feature. So we can also do evaluating functions. So let's try number one. So we will input x minus 3 all over to x minus 5. So we will press first the fraction button. So x button is below on. So x minus 3. And then we press arrow down. To input x or 2x minus 5 and then once done we will press calc to input the value for x which is 4 so just press 4 and then equal sign twice there you go okay so the value is one third so you can try number two on your own okay so that we can proceed Next one, so still in evaluating function, you can actually do or you can actually evaluate two functions at a time. So that is when parehas lang yung value ng x. So for this, so we will input the first expression, yung x squared minus 2x plus 3, and then we will input colon. So colon is on the integral sign button. So, yun nasa taas po. And then, the font color is red. So, meaning to say, we need to press first alpha. Okay? So, we input x squared. So, x and then square minus 2x plus 3 alpha. And then, the integral sign button. And then, second expression. So, 3x exponent 3 and then move then minus 9 then again we will press calc and input 5 then finally we press equal sign so that's the first or that's for number 3 and then that's for number 4 so 18 and then 366 I, ho I hope you can follow. Okay. So, once the students already know how to do that, so pwede na po siyang i-apply sa uh, word problem. So, let's say we have this given problem. It says, Ivy and Rick have a joint savings account. So, every end of the month, Ivy saves 1,000 pesos and Rick saves 15% of his monthly net income. So, if Rick's Net income this month is 20,521.35 pesos. So how much could they deposit in their account this month? So you can ask your students to construct the equation and then after which they identify the answer to the problem. Okay. So let's try. So that will be 0 0.15x plus 1,000. And then press calc. Then we input the value for x, which is 20,521.35. Then press again the equal sign twice. Then pop. Okay. So that means that they could say 4,078.20 pesos uh, th this month. All right. Another application, so we can also solve equation with one unknown in calculate menu or function. So assuming we have this given uh, problem, so the sum of three consecutive even numbers is 432. 
So what is the, lar the largest number? So assuming that the smallest number is represented by x. So therefore, the second number is x plus 2 and the largest even number is x plus 4. Okay. So getting the sum, so we'll have the equation 3x plus 6 is equal to 432. So we need to input this equation, 3x plus 6 is equals 432 in the calculator. So how can we do that? So we first input 3x plus 6. And then we press alpha calc for the equal symbol. And then we input 432. And then we press shift, calc, and then equal sign. So kapag equal sign lang po yung pinindot natin, mag -e error po siya. So you have to press first shift and then calc. Okay? So since the value of x is 142, then it means that the largest number is 146. So that's it. So you can also apply this concept in solving problems in geometry. So let's say in a parallelogram A, B, C, D, so the measures of angles A and B are given. So to solve for this problem, the students should realize that angles A and B are consecutive angles. Thus, they are supplementary or their measures are supplementary. And then so to compute for angles C and D, so the students should know that angles A and C angles B and D are opposite angles. So when we talk about opposite angles in parallelogram, uh, they are congruent or the measures are equal. So you can also apply that here. Okay, so another application, you can also apply that method in solving compound interest. Let's say you are teaching business math, just like me, okay? So let's say in compound interest, we have this given problem. So basically to solve for uh, the compound amount, we use this formula. But in this given problem, the unknown is the time, okay? So to solve for the time, what we, or what I often do is we formulate or we uh, derive the formula for time, okay? Using the concept of logarithm. But using the calculator, adding yung uh, compound amount formula na lang po yung gagamitin natin. So how can we do that? So again, since the compound amount is... 500,000, so we input 500,000, alpha calc for the equal symbol, and then the principal or the present value is 350,000, open parenthesis, and then we press 1 plus the annual interest rate is 12%, so that's 0 0.12 over 12, that's the conversion period. Uh, not 12, but 4 since quarterly, the conversion period is quarterly. Raise to... Yan. So again, conversion period of 4 multiplied by 2 years. I 2 years. Unknown pala. So for, since the time is the unknown, so we can just use x for this. So shift calc and then equal sign to solve for x or for the time. So approximately, it will take 3 years for Shani to accumulate 500,000 pesos. Okay, next. So let's use or let's apply or explore the complex function or complex menu. So from the menu button, you press and then press 2. So let's try number 1. So open parentheses. So negative 10 plus 2. I is on ENG button. Yan. So plus, open parenthesis, 4 minus 3, I again is on ENG button, and then close parenthesis. And then we just press the equal sign. Okay. So that's the answer to number 1. So you can just try numbers 2 and 3 for this. Okay. Next. So let's proceed to statistics function. So let's try to work on this one. So it says in the problem that a company with 6 departments has 20, 25, 31, 15, 9, and 11 employees with an equal semi-monthly salary of 7,000 pesos, 6,800 pesos, 7,400 pesos, etc. Okay, so we look for the average semi-monthly salary of all employees of the company. So using the calculator, so we have here the steps. So we press menu 
and then 6 for statistics and then we press 1 for one variable and then since we have or we need frequency then we press shift menu arrow down we look for statistics so that's button 3 and then on the frequency by pressing 1 and then now we can input the values okay so for x we'll start with 7000 and then 6800 equal sign 7400 equal sign and then 8150 equal sign yeah and then 9,100 equal sign, and then 7,500. And then after which, we can just use the arrow button. Yeah. So for 7,000, so the frequency is 20. And we have 25, 31 equal sign, 15 equal sign, 9 equal sign and then 11 okay okay so now once you're done encoding all the values so next step is we press option so yun nasa baba po ng shift button so once you press that button you will see the following options so yung one that will allow you to select type so just make sure that uh when you press this one, yung options na susunod yung pipinutin is one pa rin. Otherwise, mabubura yung mga in-input natin kanina. Okay? And then two, editor, this will let you erase the data encoded or uh, insert another row. Okay? And then for three option or third option, one variable calculation. So this will give you all possible values for statistics. And finally, for statistics calc will allow you to compute for each value one at a time. Okay, so we will be applying or we will use the fourth button, yung fourth option. Okay, since we only need the mean. So let's continue. So from here, we press option and then for for statistics calc. Yan. And then we press again option. Arrow down. Then we look for variable. So that's using button 2. And then we press 1 for the mean. And finally, we press equal sign. Okay. So the mean monthly or the mean semi-monthly salary of all employees is 7,441.89 pesos. So I hope you can follow. Next application. So aside from mean, we can also compute for the following, the median, the first quartile, the quartile deviation, the standard deviation. So how can we do that? So from the value of the mean, we press AC. And then option, and then yung two, one variable calc. So, nandiyan po lahat ng values na kailangan natin. So, for the median, so you can just use arrow down. Median is 7,400. And then first quartile, 7,000. And then for the quartile deviation, so you get the average of the third and first quartile. So, 7,500 minus the 7,000 divided by 2. So that's 250. And then for the standard deviation, so just make sure that you know kung ano yung hinahanap nyo. Is it the population standard deviation or the uh, sample standard deviation? Okay. Next. So we can also identify or we can also construct histogram of the given data. So this is the time that you need the Casio Edu Plus app. Or ito yung kailangan natin ng internet connection. Okay. So... Again, we press AC and then option. So we will go back to the encoded data and then we press shift and then option for the QR code. Yan. So all you need to do is to scan the QR code using the Casio Edu Plus app. And then, so kapag na-scan na po yung QR code, so using this one, so ito na po yung magiging graph. Okay. Next one, 
So let's try normal distribution. So how can we identify the area under the standard normal curve of the following? So let us just try letter A. So normally, to solve for this one, we need uh, a Z distribution table. But using Casio class, we hindi na natin to kailangan. Okay? So how can we solve? using class with calculator. So first, we press menu, and then six again for statistics, and then one for one variable. So nawala na po yung ginawa natin kanina. So it's okay. Then we press again, option, and then we choose four. So press again the option button, and then arrow down. So we look for normal distribution. That's button four. Yan. Okay. So if you could notice, we have here four options. So one, two, three, four. P, Q, R, and then T. So we will use one button to find the area to the left of Z. Two, if we will identify the area between zero and C. Three, if we will identify the area to the right of Z. So to easily illustrate that one, ito po yung example niyan. Okay, so meaning to say for letter A, we will use button 1 since we need to identify uh, the area to the left of Z. Okay, so let's continue. So we press 1. And then we input the value 1.63. Close parenthesis and then equal sign. Yeah. Okay, so ibig sabihin, uh, the, the area is 94.85%. Okay. Now let's try that in a word problem. So if I may read, so during GCQ, a commuter waits an average of 30 minutes before boarding a bus with a standard deviation of 8 minutes. So assuming that the time is normally distributed, so what is the probability that a commuter waits for more than 40 minutes? So recall that for this one, we need to convert first the raw score into z-score yung using this formula okay so to compute for this one let us just use the calculate menu so we have 40 minus 30 okay press right button 8 and then equal sign so that's 5 fourths or 1.25 Okay, so that's the equivalent z-score or z-value. Then we go back to statistics menu. So press 6 or menu and then 6. 1, option, and then 4, statistics calc. And then we press again, option, and then we look for the normal distribution button, which is 4. Okay, so more than 40 minutes, so meaning we will use button 3. And then we input 1.25. Yan. And then equal sign. Okay? So, yan po. So, the probability that a commuter waits for more than 40 minutes is 10.57%. Okay? Next one. Still under statistics. So, another application is in correlation and regression. So, let's try to input this first the values. So, from the menu button, we press again 6. And then this time we press 2. Yeah. And then since we have we still have here frequency, so off lang po muna natin. So we press shift, menu, and then arrow down, statistics. So that's button 3. And then press 2 to off the frequency, to turn off the frequency. Okay. So we now input the values for x. So 2, 3. So just press the equal button for each value. 7. Okay. And then just use the arrow button to move the cursor. So for y, we have 600, 750, 800, 1,200, 1,300, and finally, so we have 1,550. Okay. 
Next. So we will now identify the value of the correlation coefficient that shows the strength of linear relationship between the two variables. And then we will also construct the line of best fit relating the years of work experience and daily rate of employees. So to solve for these two, pwedeng isang uh, one computation only using the calculator. Pwede rin naman na isa-isa. Okay. So let's continue. So we press option and then we can just press four. Okay. So when you press four, nandito na po yung Correlation coefficient, which, which is equal to 0 0.98, th that shows a strong positive uh, relationship between the two variables. And then for the line of best fit, that is y caret or y is equal to 159.05 plus 194.29x. Okay. Naman po yung ano, yung, yung isa isa lang, iko compute. Okay. So again, from the encoded data, so we press option, arrow down, press 1 for statistics calc, press again the option, then arrow down, press 4 for regression. So let's compute for R. So by pressing 3 and then equal sign. Ayan. Then press option again. Look for regression 4, and then this time we compute for A. So by pressing 1, and then equal sign. Okay. And then for B, so press again 4, 2, press 2 for B, and then equal sign. Ayan po. Okay. So it's your choice kung alin po yung gagamitin nyo dito sa dalawa. Next. So let us estimate the daily rate of an employee who has 10 years of work experience. So since we already have the data and then uh, the line of best fit, pwede po diretso na lang siya i-compute sa calculator. So here's the step. So we input first 10 and then press option, arrow down, regression. So press 4 and then press 5. Finally, the equal sign. Okay. So estimately, uh, the, daily, the daily rate of an employee who has 10 years of work experience is 2,101.90 pesos. Okay. And finally, we can also construct a scatter plot of the data. So parang yung ginawa lang din po natin kanina, we will scan the QR code using the Casio Edu Plus app. Okay. So we press option. One, two, okay, shift, option, yan, and then we scan the QR code, po. okay, and so this will be the graph or the scatter plot of the data, okay, next one, so let's proceed to distribution, function, or menu, so assuming we have this given problem, okay, so you press menu, and then this time, we will use seven button, or the seventh button. Yan po. And then we press two for normal cumulative distrib distribution. So the lower value is 36, the upper value is 40. Yan. And then standard deviation, since the given is the variance, then we get the square root of 4.8. And close by parentheses, then equal sign. Then for the mean, so we have 38.5. Then equal sign. Yeah. Okay. So that's the value. Okay, so we have 62.63. Uh, okay. Another application of the distribution. So this is the reciprocal of what we did a while ago in the uh, statistics 
menu or function. Okay, so let me read. So during GCQ, a commuter waits an average of 30 minutes before boarding a bus with a standard deviation of 8 minutes. So assuming that the time is normally distributed, so find the maximum time of waiting of the lowest 10% of the commuters. Okay, so since we'll be doing the opposite, so this time around, we will identify the raw score. Okay. So we press menu 7 and then 3 for inverse normal. So the area is 10% or 0 0.1. Since we are following normal distribution, then the standard deviation is 1 and the mean is 0. Then we press equal sign. Okay. So the value or the corresponding Z score is negative 1.28. Okay, so since this is the value or the Z value or Z score, then we can now compute for the raw score. So for this, pwedeng sa calculate na lang po natin siya i-compute. Okay. So moving on, let's proceed to spreadsheet. So that is menu 8. So assuming we want to identify the following. So let's start with A. So how much is the monthly payment? So for the given problem, the value of or the present value, A, is 65,000 pesos. And the unknown is the monthly payment or R. Okay. And then I here is the periodic rate, which is computed by dividing the annual interest rate R by the conversion period uh, for one year, M. Okay. So meaning to say that will be 12% or 0 0.12 divided by 12. And then for N, that is M times T. So M is the conversion period. So again, that is 12. And then T is two years. Okay. So let's compute using Casio Classwis. So we use the calculate menu. So we input 65,000, then input equal sign by pressing alpha calc. And then we will represent R or the monthly payment by X. Open parentheses, 1 plus, so 0.12 over 12, the conversion period in one year. R right, close parentheses, exponent. The negative symbol, open parentheses, 12, and then times 2 years. Close parentheses, move the cursor down, so 0.12 over 12. Yeah. Then again, we move the cursor, and then close parentheses. Then so once, once you're done with the equation, we press shift, calc, and then equal sign. Ayan po. Okay, so the monthly payment will be 3,059.78 pesos. Okay. Now for B, so to prepare an amortization schedule, we will now use the spreadsheet. Now in the spreadsheet, we will only input periodic payment up to outstanding principal. So for the payment number, meron naman po nakalagay doon na numbers, but we will input uh, the outstanding principal or the present value of 65,000 uh, in row one, okay? So dito po muna tayo. So we press menu. And then spreadsheet, so that's 8. And then move the cursor to D1. And then we input 65,000 pesos. Then equal sign. Yan. Okay. Next is we input the periodic payment. So we computed in A the periodic payment, which is 3,059 point something. But when we input the periodic payment, maganda siguro up to six decimal places para sakto yung computation natin sa dulo. Okay? So let's continue. So we move the cursor to cell A2. So we input 3,059.77. If 
five six nine five. Yeah, then equal sign, and then we will just copy and paste. So you press option arrow down, and then copy and paste by pressing two. Yeah. So we move the cursor down, equal sign. So down ulit, then equal sign. Paulit-ulit lang po. Hanggang uh, row 25. Since the first payment is on row uh, 2. Yeah. Arrow down, equal sign, up to cell or row 25. That's it. And then we will just press AC once done. Okay. Next is we identify or we input the interest paid per period. So in the formula or in A, we computed for I. So again, I mentioned that I is the periodic rate. And that is computed by dividing the interest rate, the annual interest rate, by the conversion period in one year. So that is 12% divided by 12, which is equal to 0 0.01. Okay. So we move the cursor to B, to cell B2. Yeah. And then we press option, fill formula. So the outstanding principal is in cell D1. So we press D1 times 0 0.01 equal sign. So the range will be from B2 to B25. So 5 equal sign. And then press again the equal sign. So that's it. Okay. Next. So if you could notice, wala pa po yung sa... B3 hang pababa po wala pa since ang outstanding principal pa lang po is yung nasa cell D1. Okay. So let's proceed. So let us now compute the principal repaid. So the principal repaid is uh, the difference between the uh, periodic payment and the interest paid per period. So we will just get the difference of A2 and B2 cells. Okay. So let's continue. So we move the cursor to C2, then press option, press 1 to fill formula, and then alpha A1, I mean 2, minus, and then alpha B2 equals, then move the arrow, move arrow right, C2 to C25, and then equal sign. So that's it. Okay. Lastly, so for the outstanding principal, that is the difference of A. So you nasa D1, and then we will subtract that to C2, the principal repaid. Okay. So again, we move the cursor to D2, and then press option, fill formula. Then alpha D1 minus alpha C2 equals. Then for the range, we have from D2 to D25. And then press equal sign. Yes, that's it. Okay, so we can move the cursor down to see all values. Okay. So just take note ha, uh, to some calculator, hindi po yung mismong value yung makikita. So kapag ganun po, just press shift, menu, and then arrow down. Then you look for a spreadsheet. Yan. Katulad po yan. Formula po yung nakalagay dyan. So ulitin lang po natin. Shift, menu, arrow down, spreadsheet. So that's four. And then 2, show cell. And then press again 2 to show the value. Yan po. Okay? Last one. So how much in total is the interest to be paid? So for this, uh, we can just move the cursor in cell B26. And then we'll get the sum 
from B2 to B25. Yan. Okay, so we press option, arrow down. Yan. And then press 4 for the sum. And then we input B, so that's alpha, B, 2, colon, so alpha, and then the integral sign, button, alpha, B, and then 25. Enclose by parentheses, and then equal sign. Okay, so the interest, total interest is 8,434.62, estimately. So you can also do that uh, in periodic payment. Okay, so we can also get the sum. So we can also identify, so that we can also identify the total payment. Okay, alpha, integral symbol, alpha A, and then 25 close parentheses, and then equal sign. Ayan po. So, when we get the difference of 73,000 and then the 8,400, that will be equal to the 65,000 pesos uh, present value. Okay? Next, let's have table. So, normally, when we say table menu function, um, we just want to construct table of values. Okay, but other than that, we can also apply this uh, function or menu if we want to identify point, point of intersection just like this problem. So let us identify the point of intersection between the line and the parabola given. Okay, so here's the steps. So we press menu. And then 9. And then we input the first function. So that's 2x plus 1 equals, input the second function, so x squared minus 2 equals, yan. Then let's say we use from negative 10 to 10. Yan. Equal sign. And then for the step, yan na lang po, 1. Then we press equal sign, okay? So we can just move, use the button or arrow down, button. Yan. Yan po. So meaning to say the intersection, the first intersection is negative 1, negative 1. And, uh, ayan. So another point of intersection, so the coordinates are 3, 7, okay? Also, given this, you can, pwede rin po siyang i-graph. So just press shift and then option. And then scan the QR code and use the Casio Edu Plus app. Okay. So when you do that, ito po yung makikita nyo na graph. Next one. So let's have equation. So for, ex for equation, let's say we have this given problem. Okay. So just take note that for equation, you can solve a system system of equation up to four unknown or poly, polynomial equation or polynomial functions uh, up to degree four okay so given this problem so we want to identify about how long does a regular respiratory cycle last so for this so we press menu and then alpha a so that's negative symbol. And then we press 2 for polynomial. And then the degree here is 3. And then we input the coefficients. So we start with negative 0 0.035 equals. And then input 0 0.152 equals. And then lastly, we have 0 0.173. Yan. Yan. And then we just press the equal symbol. 5.28, negative 0 0.94, and then 0. But since for this problem, we uh, 0 and negative values cannot be considered as answer, then we say that uh, the answer is 5.28 seconds, okay?
Next one, inequality. So for inequality, let's try to work on this given problem. Okay. So at what age does a driver driver's reaction time tend uh, to be greater than 25 milliseconds? So V of X should be greater than 25. So substituting the values. So we will input take the inequality 0.005 X squared minus 0.23 X minus 3 greater than 0 using the inequality menu. So again, we press menu, then alpha B. So for the degree, that's 2. And then we press the appropriate option. So that is using option 1. Okay. Then we input the coefficients. So that's 0 0.005 equals negative 0 0.23. And then negative 3 equals. So we have negative 10.6. And then, so of course, we consider the positive answer, which is 56 or over or almost over 57. Okay. So it means that the drivers, uh, the drivers, drivers almost over 57 years old uh, tend to have uh, reaction time greater than 25 milliseconds. Okay. Last one. So we have ratio. So let's say we have this given problem. So Miel's pay by working 40 hours last week was 90,800 pesos. So how much will he receive for 32 hours of work? So for this, we will use the ratio function in your calculator. So that is by pressing menu and then alpha and then C. So, magkakatabi lang po yung A, B, C, and then D. Okay? So, let's begin. So, alpha, C, and then we use the appropriate button. So, for this, let's use 2. Okay? So, we input 40 equal sign, and then the 19,800 pesos equal sign, and then the 32 hours equal sign. Yan po. And then we just press the equal sign to identify the value. Okay. So meaning Miel will receive 15,840 pesos for working or for 32 hours of work. Okay. Finally, I would like to share with you uh, the application or some or possible activity that you can use using Casio Edu Plus app. So kung may internet connection naman po and possible naman po yung gamitin sa klase. So let's try this. Okay. So first you have on the part of the teacher, so you have to construct first class. So maybe this is applicable if you are applying groupings. Pag whole class po kasi masyadong marami yung mag makikita yung sagot dyan. So let's say yan. So we click on class and then click plus so the plus sign and then you indicate the class name so let's say group 1 11 abm1 so just like that pwedeng iba rin naman so let's say ang name ay mat that shift okay and then once done with the class name you open this in a browser Okay. So, why do we need to open this in a browser? So, copy po natin yung QR code. So, this QR code must be given to our students para alam po nila kung saan nila ilalagay or saan nila isesend yung activity na pinagawa nyo sa kanila. Okay. So, yan po yung makikita ninyo. So, you can just copy the QR code. Okay. And then, dun po sa Casio Edu Plus, magkakaroon na po ng bagong, ano, ng bagong class. So, mat.shift. Okay. So you can try this one. So let's say on the part of the student. So let's say we this is the activity. So you can try this ha. Pero wag po puro number 1 yung piliin ninyo para iba-iba naman po yung graph na makita ko. So let's say we have this show the graph of each function. So one function for each member of the group. So alphabetical order po. Pwede po siguro yon. Then observe and make conjectures about the graph. So, yan po. 
So on the part of the students, they will scan the QR code provided provided by the teacher sa yung kanina po. Yan. Okay, so bibilisan ko na lang po, ah. medyo ano na po. So pag nascan na po ng bata, so repress po yung add graph and calculation result. And then, iscan po yung QR code sa calculators. And then, pwede pong indicate ng bata kung ano po yung name nila or just the nickname. And then, press share po. Okay? So, kapag na-share na po, ito po yung lalabas, sharing successful. And then, yun, yung mga bata po, makikita po nila kung yung graphs po, yung mga nag-share na po ng graph doon. So, that's it po. Thank you. Sir? Thank you, Ma'am Red, for that very comprehensive discussion about... Uh, well, sorry po. <laughs> yes, Ma'am. So, meron tayo mga nare-receive na comments from our viewers na masyadong mabilis. Sinabi po namin kanina, this will be a demonstration approach. So, uh, dahil nga po ito yung webinar, it is recorded, pwede po kayong bumalik ng bumalik sa page uh, po ng Dependent Aluyong para ma-review po ninyo ang ating session for today and we are planning with Sir Joel na we will get the recorded copy of this one and we will paste it sa Asho Philippines. Sige po, Facebook sir. Facebook. Sige po, gusto so, ko po yeah. patapos talaga yung, ano, yung, yung lahat na yun yes, para po magamit nila. Okay, so that's yes. it po, sir. So, Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Ma'am Red. Maraming, maraming, maraming. Salamat po. So, ayan. Alam ko, medyo nabitin tayo. Pero tulad na sinabi ko, as promised, Casho and SDO Madaluyong will find ways para may deliver yung talagang full, full, full webinar session on this one. Although full na naman siya, we have to skip some parts ng webinar kasi kailangan natin i-follow yung time. So, again, Meron po kaming aayusin lang after uh, meron kaming aayusin para mailabas namin yung full version po ng ating webinar. So at this point, let us have our next speaker. He is a full-time faculty member at the Philippine Normal University Manila who handles courses along physics and science education in the undergraduate level. He graduated magna cum laude for his bachelor's degree in physics for teachers which continued to a master's degree in applied physics, major in medical physics at University of Santo Tomas, and presently, he is doing his PhD research in science education at Philippine Normal University. For the past years, he has shared inputs as a focal person and speaker in contents as well as pedagogy to the Department of Education, Department of Science and Technology Education, Institute, local government units, and other educational institutions. He, he has also served as author, editor, and item writer for instructional materials for instructional materials and examination. He is a member of various professional government and societies along science, education, and research. He advocates an inclusive science education and the building of a strong scientific culture for the Philippines through quality education resources. Let us all welcome our second speaker, Sir Alphonse Jason O. Pelgone. Hello, sir. Good afternoon po. Sir, nakamute po. Ayan. Hello. Hello, sir. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you. Uh, game na. <laughs> wow. Um, wait, I'll just share my screen. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Ayan. Uh, so, nakikita na ba siya, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, let me start. Ayun. Okay, good afternoon everyone. So uh, this is gonna be, well, technically it's, it's supposed to be a long talk, but uh, we'll try to keep it on time. So 
I would like to offer you uh, this talk uh, on harmonized melts in math and science for flexible teaching and learning. And um, of course, uh, as said a while ago, I am from the Philippine Normal University. So before I continue, I would like I would like to make a shout out. So again, shout out to DepEd Mandaluyong. I've been with Mandaluyong for some for some you know tasks, and they've been very accommodating. Yung mga bosses sa uh, SDO Mandaluyong, and then um, yung mga nasa uh, si Ma'am si Sir Resti, si Ma'am Roxanne. Tapos siya yung Mandaluyong Science and yung MP Nag, mataas na paralan ng Nepali Gonzalez. And of course, I would also like to thank uh, Kasha for inviting me or having me. Ayan, thank you po. Ayan, teachers, uh, mga teachers, mga kaguroan natin sa Mandaluyong at yung mga nanonood na hindi taga Mandaluyong, uh, tulungan niyo po ako na ma-identify ko muna ang ating audience ngayon. So please uh, go to this site by uh, scanning the QR code or join, uh, going to slido.com in your browser and keying in the, the code, which is hashtag 90424. So uh, I would like you first to join me in Slido so I can see the spread of uh, the people who are joining us here. Okay? So punta lang po ako ng Slido. All right. Let me go to Slido. Oops. Sorry. All right, let's play game. So, sa mga teachers po natin na nandyan, please answer or please give me the, uh, no, indulge me. Okay, sagutin lang po natin. Number one, which specific subject did you teach for the longest time? So, ano na po yung mga naturo nyo ng matagal, no? Uh, kung bagong teacher lang po, ano po yung tinuturo nyo recently? Okay, so tingnan po natin ang spread ng ating data. So, isa pa lang atay nakakasagot. Antayin ko po yung inyong mga sagot. Marami po yan. Ayan, ang dami. No? You can answer two no? or three kung paulit-ulit or marami kayong tinuturo. I just want to see the spread of the data. No? So, sub natin to. So far, we have Earth Sciences, Gen Math. Uh, we have, ayun, may Precal and Basical. Ayan, we'll see. Ayan, 12 people have tried to key in their answers, we have 13 people. You mind hindi po nakaka, nakaka, ano to, nakapasok sa slide, it's okay. Uh, I know sometimes it will be, you know, difficult to to handle gadgets, no? Maglilipat ka from Facebook to your QR code scanner. So, ayan, no? Dahil yung talk ni Ma'am Red ay math, so malamang nakaramihan na nandito ay mga math teachers pa rin, ano? Ayan. But we have a spread also from the the other sciences like physics, earth sciences, earth and life, chemistry, biology, physical sciences, um, pre-calculus, okay, chemistry, and so on. So, so far leading tayo sa general mathematics. So, shout out sa mga gen math teachers. Uh, I hope yung mga gen math teachers, no, uh, talagang Gina G sila. So, talagang pwede din natin silang pagturuin ng science in the future. Uh, later, I'll talk about it. So, ayan. So, nangunguna talaga yung science ay mga math natin, uh, but we see the spread, no? We see the spread in the sciences. Thank you very much for indulging me in this first question. Um, you can still key in your answer, kaya lang I'll move on to the next poll question para dire-diretso po tayo, okay? So, I'll move on to question number two. Oops, sorry. Uh, my question number two is, guys, mga teachers, what is your favorite science topic or concept? Bigyan nyo naman ako ng sagot na ano ba talaga yung pinakapaborito nyong science topic or concept niyo Ayun, genetics. Ayan, paborito ko rin po yan. Antayin ko, I'll give you a minute to win it. <laughs> okay, wow, may mga, may mga physics teachers tayo in the house. They like mechanics. And of course, yung mga bio people natin. Gas laws, yes, of course. DNA, yep. Antayin natin. Yan. So far, no, madami, madami, most of you said mechanics. So balance equations, no, in stoichiometry, genetics, pahabol yung genetics, ha? earth science, specific po, baka pwede kayo mag-cite ng specific na topic. Chemical reactions, okay, stoichiometry pa rin, Mag electronics, magnetism, okay, acceleration, that's with mechanics. Ayan, ang dami, no? 
Thank you. Uh, sige, keep on uh, keep on entering your answers po. Ayun, dumadami sila. Ayan, so leading na yung genetics natin, no? Ayan. Ayan, siguro i... Ayan, for now, uh, yeah, paulit-ulit yung stoic, yung chemical chemical uh, reactions, balancing equations, andyan yung ating gases. At saka yung earth science, nakita natin, paikot siya, no? Andun din yung mga chemistry topics like electronic configurations, yung physics, no? Although, ay, may nakita ako mga medyo biological yung terms like scientific names in taxonomy, of course. Uh, wow, there's quantum physics, space astro uh, space science and astronomy. Yep. I think most people naman like astronomy, no? Especially the kids. Ayan, so for 43 people, most of you said you actually like genetics. Thank you very much. Um, and last question, please indulge me again. Uh, don't worry, you can still answer, no? Later on. Hindi naman to matatapos. Um, one more is, what is your favorite mathematics topic or concept? So, uh, regardless po kung kayo ay science or math teachers, ano po yung paborito niyong math topic or concept? Uh, math topic po. Yan, math topic. Okay, you can be very specific if you want. No, specific. Like radicals, you know, imaginary numbers. Uh, math topic, please. Sige, it's Okay. <laughs> Okay, pwede naman natin makonsider yung sa paggawa ng panis square na math. Ay, may nakita na akong statistics, geometry, oh, ah, oh, combinat, ah, oh, yeah. Integers. Linear coordinate plane, yeah, linear equations, yeah, yeah. Sige po, so na leading tayo sa algebra, we have trigonometry, um, linear equations. Wala bang may gusto ng quadratic equations? Okay, exponential and logarithmic uh, functions na paborito din natin yun. Especially yung mga na... Ayun, I like this one. No? Non-routine problems, napaka 21st century educational landscape. Ayan, so for ar around 43 people, no? More or less 42 people answered and leading tayo sa algebra and trigonometry. Napaka kamahalaga naman po talaga. Uh, maraming salamat for indulging me. I will not close the, the poll. You can keep your answers uh, coming, no? Pamaya, titignan ko ulit pagkatapos at pwede ako mag-shoutout na lang kahit doon na lang sa chat box or something. Okay? So with that, uh, let me go back to my presentation. Uh, thank you again no, for indulging me. Ayan. So let me go back. Thank you. So magbibigay lang po ako ng disclaimer kasi yung title ko po napakalaki. Alam niyo naman, nakita niyo yung salitang milks. And my disclaimer is simple. I, I will not deal with all the milks in science and math. Because you would not have enough time. If we will do it, uh, willing naman sana kong gawin siya. Pero I know it will not, you know, uh, be su sufficient no, when it comes to the time. So yun ang disclaimer ko ha. Pero magbibigay po ako. I'm gonna give some examples where we can converge uh, points for integration and harmonize um, ideas no, in science and math. So we'll provide um, a two-way a two -way, uh, mirror, no, a two-way vision for both science and math. Okay? So let me continue. Okay. Um, when I give a talk, I always ask, what is the goal of teaching kids? So why do you think we need to te uh, teach uh, math and science to Filipino children? Um, I guess knowing the purpose of teaching would actually underscore the need for doing it. Diba? Bakit kailangan natin siyang gawin? No? Ano yung purpose nun, No. So oftentimes, there are no explicit answers to these questions. No. When I say explicit is yung answer na makukuha natin sa mga papel, no? sa mga black and white. We can't really find as explicit answers. However, I would like to hi highlight the outcome as prescribed by the Department of Education. And according to the Department of Education, it's basically to have holistically developed Filipinos or Filipino children with 21st century skills. And we as uh, in the math and the sciences, we are, we are components no? to reach this goal. So in other words, sabi nga kanina ni Ma'am Ma Red, no? it is important that in math you develop problem solving and critical thinking among learners. Similar with science, no? Uh, that's my point. Because my point is we have to look at science and math together. We have to look at math and science as one. Uh, later on, I'll, I'll go to that. So tulong-tulungan po natin i-develop ang mga learners na ito despite the times, no? despite the difficult times. Okay. Uh, I found this in Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. I found this in Twitter. And it's funny, 
but at, at, at the same time, it underscores the need for education. So especially math and science education. So for example, if, if you will see this, nakakatawa siya, pero at the same time, you will think, who, who will write this? Uh, who will write this post? No. Um, especially now, we have we don't really have to shy away from from our task, no, our responsibility as educators. Kahit pandemic, kahit new normal ang usapan, kasi kailangan kailangan. Um, the pandemic has placed STEM, STEM, science, math, education in the forefront. Uh, ngayon natin naiintindihan na kailangan natin ng STEM professionals. So may task talaga po tayo. All right. Okay, I found this meme and I found it funny. So sabi na, me getting into science. So minsan gusto natin maging science teacher, maging scientist. Kaya lang, <laughs> may math. Parang some people will say, ang hirap naman kasi ng math, so I don't want to take science kasi may math siya. So parang ganun yung idea, no? I, they don't want to go to science kasi there's math in, in science. So parang, uh, parang at some point, some people, I'm not saying all, some people would like to see math like, uh, parang a factor that allows people to shy away from the discipline, diba? And and I, I found it the meme that sabi niya, I haven't touched math in years and I'm a science major. <laughs> now I struggle with simple addition and depression. All right, um, yeah, you can find this meme in the in the link that I provided along the side. So yeah, uh, we often often times no, kahit ang mga sujante parang nagtataka sila bakit may problem solving na dun sa science na mga word problems and they, they're thinking na, di ba science to? Bakit may math? Parang ganun. They're asking those questions repeatedly and oftentimes, we tell them or we give them answers. But oftentimes, again, <laughs> they don't really understand our reasons, no? Okay. Because sometimes, uh, we give them the math and the science that they cannot understand. Okay, I, I guess we have to realize that. Now, um, we have to be able to be facilitators, co-assessors, uh, sharers of the math and science that they know and that they can use. So we have to remember that education has this sense of utility. Uh, kailangan natin siyang magamit. So paano mo siya magagamit kung di mo siya naiintindihan? All right. Okay. Uh, kanina sabi ko, I, most people like astronomy, especially kids. Lahat tayo duman sa pagkabata and we loved astronomy. And, you know, astronomy, rocket science is basically math science. Um, you don't become uh, a rocket scientist. You don't become a rocket engineer or an aeronautics engineer without math and science. So that's that's a good point to start with. Okay. Now I, I would like to hi highlight how we try to maximize the milks. Okay. But I will not discuss a lot on milks as uh, on the nature and stuff like that because that will actually cover much of my time. But I would like to pose a question: Why do we have to talk about milks? Okay. So of course. Um, the, the other parts, I took it from the document of the Department of Education. So they say that the work, uh, the MELTs work in close association with other competencies uh, in other subjects. So I'd like to underscore the word integration. So um, they highlight, uh, kumbaga sa Filipino, no, pakikipagkapwa subject. No? Nakikipagkapwa subject. So th there is a sense of bridge that exists or a sense of uh, pathway for integration for certain subjects. Number two is the recurrence. And if you will realize, if you will scan all throughout the milks ng math and science, may mga nawawala, may nawala, lalo na sa mga lower grades, kasi ina-avoid natin your currents. But of course, because you want to do spiraling or the correct scaffold of these concepts and these skills, the teacher cannot avoid no, not to teach. Okay? And finally, the ability to be clustered together. And I call this umbrella competencies and subcompetencies. So within the subject, uh, there are competencies that we can cluster. Kaya nga minsan magugulat kayo na ilan lang yung competencies na makikita nyo sa isang quarter, no? ilang weeks sila, kasi kinluster na sila. Although, hindi natin sinasabi na madali yun, no? because you need to unpack it. Now, given the nature, we have to reteach. No? We have to reteach, reteach, reteach. Okay? As long as, uh, to the point that we get the, the outcomes that we want. And another point is, we have to be able to unpack the milks. Now, my point here in this discussion is to be able to, well, hopefully unpack the milks to make it more productive, especially for us science and math teachers. Okay? So, um, my key takeaway, my point here is, we have, alam ko mahirap kasi nagsisimula na tayo, uh, nagagawa na, gumagawa na tayo ng mga ADM modules, gumagawa na tayo ng SLMs, pero I would like, Siguro after some time, pag medyo nakahinga na tayo, let's try to align. Let's try to map and align between everything. 
the learning experiences, the assessment strategies, and of course, ibabangga natin yung sa MELTS. Okay? Oops. Okay. So, na three points. Let's adapt, adapt, and apply. Okay? So, we adapt the MELTS. Okay? The MELTS are provided, we adapt it, we embrace it. But you do not adapt it if you don't understand it. Okay? You don't understand why, why it was given like that. You don't understand how to use that, no? Pag ganun. Pag hindi mo inaintindihan, you can't adopt it fully. Second point, adapt, no? Because we have to realize that there is no one-size-fits-all in education. And this pandemic has placed the word flexibility amidst all of us, no? Napaka-importante napaka, uh, ng salitang flexibility, no? We have to fit. We have to adapt. Uh, kasi wala, walang nag-survive na organism or species pag hindi siya nag-adapt. Okay, so yun lang usapan dito. Okay? So you get something, you embrace, and you adapt sa it to something else. Okay? And you apply it. Okay? The, here's the point. No? To, in flexible teaching and learning, we apply what we understand and what we've aligned. And this is now the creating the plans, your SLMs, your modules, your activity materials and assessments, even those that you put on your LR portal no? and your DepEd Commons and other learning, uh, learning management systems. So three things, no? adapt, adapt, and apply. Allow me to continue. Now, I think that knowing all of this, we have to understand that there are three layers of learning. And I would like to thank Dr. Christian Pastor for sharing with this picture from his presentation before. So that we look into the physical environment, the virtual space, and the cultural exposure. Now, our students are not in the physical environment uh, pertaining to the school, but they are exposed culturally. They are exposed in their households. In the, in the locality that they live in, and they can use the, the, the vast expanse of the virtual space. So I, I guess we are already provided with such, no? with such, and we just have to tie everything up, harmonize, integrate, and converge, especially for science and math, because it's easier done within our disciplines. All right. So if we can harmonize learning content and outputs across disciplines like ICT English, math, Filipino science, MAPE, social science, then it would be easy on our end if we can harmonize STEM because STEM is much related to each other. Okay? So why do we need to harmonize pala, no? Bakit ko to naiisip? Kasi po, remember, yung bata po, when, when you send your modules to the kid or to the child, he will receive how many modules? Like eight modules in a week. And this will be how long? Like 20 pages per module? And how many tasks does it cover? And it's times eight. And, and what if each week there is a deliverable or there are deliverables? So mahirap yun sa bata. So uh, the best answer is to, to talk, you know, to harmonize the content, to harmonize the output, such that if science and math can blend together, the output can be one for science and math, and some topics in science will be in science, and some topics will be in math. So, mas madali yun sa bata. And we have to remember also that we have to appreciate and, you know, uh, put, uh, we have to appreciate the parents as well because they, they will be the second teachers. They will be co-assessors of learning of the child. No? Tutulungan nila yung bata. Kaya pag sobrang mahirap sa, sa bata at sa parent, ma malamang it will be an impediment to the learning of the child. Especially in higher science and math. Remember, it's so hard to teach calculus to the child. Tapos yung magulang niya mag-facilitate sa kanya. It's actually very hard. Now, uh, when you look at uh, harmonization of content, I have these points, but I will zoom in to the first point, which is clustering based on nature. Like, for example, all the social sciences, all the humanities, of course, the STEM, and allied fields. No, We can also do it based on medium, but I'm not going to discuss on that. Clustering based on outputs, pwede naman sa math and science. And ito important para sa math and science. We harmonize based on knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values. More often than not, the skill is learned in science as well as math. No, nag, nag, nag shift lang. Pero the content and the application is in science. So pwede natin yung gawa ng paraan that we can merge that. Or we can look for points of interaction, points of convergence and integration. Okay, so... Uh, when when it comes to harmonization or integration, we we have this, no. But I'm not gonna discuss into detail what these are, because most of us already understand uh, integration. Um, my point here is 
21st century education landscape is not compartmentalized subjects. It's not about compartmentalized subjects. 21st century education landscape and the fourth industrial revolution characterized by the merging of cyber physical systems. For example, emergence of artificial intelligence, nanotechnology. These are multidisciplinary sciences. For example, artificial intelligence. It's not science. It's not just math. It's everything in between. It has society. It has ethics. So everything else that's that's coming out of these uh, changes in the society, in in the society in the world, they are actually geared towards integration. All right. Uh, and we have to remember. A while ago, I talked about alignment, and we when we do alignment, we do alignment between these three: curriculum, instruction, as assessment. Um, the yung ginawa ni Mam kanina, she was you know, sharing uh, tips on how to do activities as well as which can serve as assessment. But at the end of the day, uh, even if you have so many activities, so many assessments, you will have to ask, uh, does it actually go back? No? Does it reflect my expectations as prescribed by the competencies, the content standards, and the performance standards? Because at the end of the day, the key stage standard is reflected from those. So kung hindi natin ma-achieve yung sinet nating outcomes, kahit ang dami-dami mong activities na hindi tatamaan yun, wala siyang sense. Okay? So, maganda rin na madami, pero dapat tumatama. Or kung nari, nagda-darts ka, lahat ng dart mo tumatama sa bullseye. No? Yun ang point natin doon. Okay. So, anong sinasabi ko? Uh, ang point ko is, we have to look at science and math and STEM as a whole as one. Uh, merong mga philosophical perspectives na nagsasabi, na kinokompartmentalize natin siya. Na science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Or sometimes they put arts and agriculture in between. But um, th there are a lot of research that focus on STEM as STEM. You don't say STEM is science. No, but STEM is STEM. STEM is STEM as it is. Okay? So let me continue. Now, uh, scientists today, uh, we use a variety of mathematical tools. We cannot deny this, especially those working in the laboratories, those who are doing research. We, we need no, we need calculus, we need discrete mathematics, and we do statistics no, to describe physical, biological, and even the social systems that we are a part of. Now, in the math classes, one of the biggest needs or questions by our students is usually relevance. Tatanangin niya, bakit ko po to gagawin, teacher? Why do I need to get the limit of this function, for example? Why do I need to integrate this? Diba? Parang kahit nga man sa amin sa physics, no? bakit ko po kailangan malaman yung strength of the electric field at a certain point from the source? And, and oftentimes, we struggle to give the answer. Uh, diba? Parang we struggle, no? We struggle to give the answer. And we often say, uh, let's wait, no? Darating tayo dun sa point na mas matatahi natin siya. But oftentimes, our students want instant answers. So students want to know how they are going to benefit from these calculations. Diba? Kaya nga, minsan, they shy away from the math in the science kasi hindi din nila nakikita yung kahalagahan nun. I'm not saying all, no, but there are a lot. There are some. No? So for one, we have to look at na since the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, uses of mathematics in science is data gathering and analysis, we can start there no? when we plan investigations. So we can ask them to do measurements and so on and so forth. Now, it would be nice as well that when you ask your students to solve, you can use science problems and diba, that require math tools. So pag binawa natin yun, we are now pressing on the student na gamitin mo yung math sa science. May mga instances na ganito yung nangyayari, parang nag sila ng science and nag sila ng math and when they need the same skills or same topics, hindi nila ma-distinguish na yun pala yun ay isa lang. Kasi parang iba yun sa science, iba yun sa math. That's not true. Nothing changes in, in math. No? Kung ano tinuro mo ng linear equation sa math, pag ginamit siya sa science, ganun pa rin siya. Hindi nagbabago ang rules. No? So, dapat makita natin yun. At makita ng bata yun pala. Okay. ba? <laughs> Matagal na, no? When we started to embrace science as science, no? like the intelligence of Isaac Newton, he didn't forward to us nature as nature alone. No, he forwarded to us nature as being mathematical, and we owe a lot. No, we owe a lot um, of mathematics also from Newton, especially calculus. No, and we love we love Newton for that. No, especially my physics majors, although sometimes mahirap, pero we love Newton for that. 
Uh, I'll give some examples of convergence points and interaction points. Number one, measurement and dimensional analysis. We do we do measurement in science. We do measurement in math. Diba? Nagkanina nagpakita si ma'am ng conversion. So, important din yung dimensional analysis. So, I'll go through. No, Actually, marami ako examples. So, medyo bibilisan ko na lang po. Okay. Um, when it comes to measurement and dimensional analysis, ano yung mga nakikita kong competencies? So, sa MELTS na to ha. So, for example, GP1, General Physics 1, no? Solve measurement problems. Pero grade 7 mathematics pa, meron ng meron na siyang mga competencies that would align to that. Actually, vertical siya. No? Like approximate measurement, convert measurement, solve problems using conversion. So, um, you see, there is already alignment even between math and the sciences. Dito pa lang. Okay? Let me continue. Oh, for, for, for example, variation, no? Uh, paborito din natin to, no? Variation. Um, ano yung mga gamit, no? Saan natin to nakikita? So, tingnan lang po natin, ha? Okay, um, nandito yung mga physics majors. So, uh, alam naman natin yung Hooke's Law, di ba? Uh, wherein we can actually look at Hooke's Law as a form of a variation. Di ba? Where we relate um, the elongation to the to the weight attached to the string or the spring and, of course, the restoring force as well, no? So, this is interesting Actually, we can provide the data in, in tabular form, and you can use your class with calculator to graph the, to graph the, uh, what's this? To graph uh, the data and then try to solve for the equation or find for the constant of uh, the variation. So, paborito natin ang Hooke's Law, properties of solids, no? specifically elasticity. Uh, these are some questions I gave to my uh, class. I, by the way, I actually had the class called Mathematical Methods for the Sciences. Marami kami tuturo nito. Um, and then we try to impose, not impose talaga, we try to, to press on our students the need for these mathematical tools to be able to quantify you know, science concepts. So for example, this one is on variation pa rin. The acceleration due to gravity on the moon is one-sixth of that, that of the Earth. What is the weight of an 85 kilogram astronaut on the moon? So, anong sense nito? Ano? Ang sense nito is, sa ma if ever you give this as a problem, you try to give them the idea of the concept of mass and weight, which are two different concepts. Magkaiba siya. So, alam mo yun, yung pag binigay mo lang siya sa math, yung bata will have that, that interest already na when they go to that science class, ay oo nga, no, iba pala yung mass and weight. Nagbabago pala yung weight, yung mass pala pare parehas lang. Kasi it's matter within me, parang ganon. And then another is on frequency and length of a vibrating uh, string. Diba? Sabi dito, the frequency of a vibrating guitar string varies inversely as its length. So they can actually have applications on this in music, etc. But this, in essence, is variation. Let me continue. Okay, for example, the intensity of light, no? And then here is combined gas law, the, the lower example. What do we see here? So on the upper part, we have the inverse square law, which will have uses also in electricity, you know, for example, Coulomb's law and gravitation for Newton's law of gravitation. And yung gas laws, you know, like for example, the combined gas law there, uh, the example, you know, shows the relationships between the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. Diba? Essentially, we are looking at variation, but we look or replace the words or the concepts within that. Let me continue. Um, in grade 9 mathematics, it is said that we have to let our students illustrate situations that involve the following variations. Direct, inverse, joint, and combined. So grade 9 pa lang, meron ka nang pwedeng pasukan ng science. Okay, let me continue by highlighting functions and graphical analysis. May mga graphical functions ang calculators ng Casio. Uh, by the way, I, 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 have, no, I have classes here, so thank you sa Casio sa pag-provide. Very generous po ang Casio. Ayan, so... Although there are apps no, that, that graph, no, it's actually nice also to have a calculator. So, ano yung mga points for integration natin sa functions and graphical analysis? So, for example, mechanics. No? Sa kinematics, we can look into uh, problems on motion. I took this from uh, Fundamentals of Physics by Resnick and Holiday. So, see, for example, uh, you're driving, and then afterwards, after a certain period of time, you started walking. And here you see your position from the station, which is essentially displacement. So uh, you can actually apply a lot of concepts in mathematics here, including, of course, geometry, including angles, of course. But here the focus I would like to highlight is graphing. 
and under being able to understand graphs. Next. Uh, okay, uh, I gave this as a as a quiz in in my class. Um, okay, I gave this uh, to to my class, and I I told them to convert the velocity versus time graph to acceleration and displacement uh, versus time graph after nine seconds. So I, I noticed they had difficulty. Nahirapan sila magconvert ng graphs kasi basically siguro they lack you know, the understanding of how to do it. Okay. So, pero madali lang talaga siya in, in reality. Actually, sa mga not results, if I may say so, sa mga not results natin for the past years, mahina ang bata sa graphing. Okay. Um, alam natin yan. Pero bakit hindi natin magawa ng paraan? I, I don't know why, no? Pero we try to address it. Pero mahina pa rin sila sa graphic or analysis of graphs. Also, for the chem people here, uh, we have Boyle's Law, no? Uh, I like the graph I took from this side. Um, we know what happens in Boyle's Law, no? This one, you have a PV diagram. This is the pressure in pound per square inch uh, uh, as with the volume in ML. You see? You see this one, this curve? In essence, this is an isotherm because this exists in constant temperature. So if you graph this, uh, 1 over P uh, across uh, the against the volume, you'll get a straight line telling you the, the constant, which is temperature. But this is already an isotherm. Diba? So ang ganda-ganda tingnan ito. No? Another one is we can apply it to epidemiological studies. No? For, uh, I took this in ncov.ph. If you want to go, if you want to know the statistics of, about ncov in the Philippines, please go to ncov.ph. Sobrang galing ng kanilang mga, um, ng kanilang mga data, ng how they present the data. So, for example, you have to present here uh, yung mga namatay, na confirmed cases, namatay, and mga naka-recover. So, tingnan nyo, and pataas pa rin ang pataas yung confirmed cases. So, we really have to do something about it. So, pati sa biological sciences, we do this. No, we do these graphs. We make these graphs. Uh, again, this is from ncov.ph. Case by group, no? Nakikita nyo? Yung pinakamarami is nasa 21 to 30, yung age group na yun. Okay. And then yung pinakamaraming namamatay asa na sa siguro nandito sa 61 to 70, no? Also, uh, I took this also from ncov.ph, cases in NCR, no? Ibang ibang way naman to show yung graphical representation of data, no? Ibang way to show the data, but you can see here pa rin the spread. Actually, pag pumunta kay si ncov.ph, pag nilagay niyo yung cursor niyo diyan, lalabas kung ilan yung cases. Right? So pino-promote ko 'yon kasi uh, that's for information of everyone, and we really need to spread the correct information uh, this time. Of course, we can also look at biodiversity and uh, the changes that happen in biodiversity. So I took this from re a research uh, by this team of uh, Daskalova, and it's on landscape forest loss as a catalyst of population and biodiversity change. And these are graphs that actually show the data of the team. So we don't exclude biology from graphing, okay? Also is, again, for graphing, this is, again, for, bio uh, for biological sciences. So this, um, I took this from a tweet, no? Sabi dito, cumulative percent, uh, percent of vertebrate species driven to extinction by human activity. So ito pa lang nalaman nito, na, napaka, napaka, napaka strong na nito para sa bata. Pero hindi nila ito maiintindihan kung hindi sila marunong mag-graph at tumingin or mag-analyze ng graphs. Alright. Now, what are the competencies that I actually took? Um, solves linear equations or inequality uh, by graphing, illustrates, and finds a slope. Ito, sa grade 7 yon And then here we have, sa grade uh, 8 math, meron din tayong graphing. Okay. So, naka, nakasunod naman, developmental naman siya. And then, meron din sa business math, no? Kasi yung mga graphs din nila in business. And we also have in pre-calculus. So, we can really, you know, look for points of integration within and across. Okay. Um, for sa sciences, uh, for example, in grade 10 science, explain relationship between growth, population growth, and carrying capacity. That could be in a graph form. Explain how populations of organisms change, no? Uh, this is for uh, earth and life science. We have bio biology too. We have ato patterns of descent. Pwede rin view in a graph. And then use gas laws. There may pressure, volume, or temperature. 
So sa general chemistry 1, yun. Ayan. Oh, and of course, no, general physics. Nandito tayo sa mga uh, graphs of motion, position, di ba? Um, velocity, acceleration. So yun. Kaya sobra pong importante na marunong sila mag-graph at mag-analyze ng graph. And I think, lalo na ngayon, pag nag upload po tayo ng mga information online, lalo na yung may, may kinalaman sa pandemic, usually nakagraph po yun or nakagraphic organizer. And usually misinterpreted siya ng mga tao. Maybe because we did not prepare them well no, how to look at or analyze graphs. Alright, let me continue by highlighting the next example which is on ratios and proportions. Saan natin ito titignan, no? Okay? Siyempre, paborito natin, stoichiometric calculations, di ba? So, pwede tayo magbigay ng examples na magpapakita ng stoichiometry para naman yung bata na relink na sa kanya na, ay oo nga, no, yung ratio and proportion pala na inaral ko sa math noon ay na-apply ko sa chemistry. Uh, in essence, they would not understand ratio and proportion, no? Kapag hindi nila nakikita ito sa ibang mga bagay, including chemistry. So, sabi ito sa General Chem C2, no, perform sto stoichiometric calculations. Sa Gen Chem 1, no, apply principles of stoichiometry. Ito din, paborito din natin kanina, genetics, no? Sa Mendelian genetics, for example, di ba? When we have the phenotypic and the genotypic ratios, di ba? Nakakatawa kaya pag nag, uh, nagpagawa tayo ng, ng, ng cross or ng, ng Punnett square sa bata, no? Kasi oftentimes, iniisip nila, hindi nila masyadong naiintindihan yung, uh, yung cross and even yung ratios. So yun, so dito yung phenotypic ratio nyo, 3 is to 1, tatlong purple, no, isang puti, and the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Meaning, isang homozygous, dalawang heterozygous, at isang homozygous na white. Yung, pero the rest, colored violet siya. Ayan. See, uh, marami tayong points of integration. Ano pa ba? Oops, sorry. So in grade 8, uh, meron tayong Mendelian genetics. In grade 9, we have non-Mendelian genetics or non-Mendelian inheritance. Yung mga papasok na dyan yung ating mga uh, multiple allelism, papasok na yung incomplete dominance, no? Para maaral na nung bata na hindi lahat Mendelian or uh, complete dominance, ika nga. Of course, equation of continuity, no? Di ba pa nagdidilig tayo, yung mahilig magdilig gamit yung host? Pag tinatakpan natin yung yung labasan ng water sa host, di ba usually sumisirit yung water, bumibilis yung water. Now, the equation of, of continuity relates uh, an important ratio and proportion which is actually the, the cross-sectional area, okay, and the velocity of the fluid within that particular tube or container. So, we see that kapag mas maliit yung cross-sectional area, mas mabilis yung, yung fluid, no, yung fluid. So, this has applications, of course, in Bernoulli's principle in, in general physics 1. Okay. Uh, a good example for that, no, fluid dynamics is on, of course, biology. Now, for example, if we represent, sorry, if we represent, if Q represents the rate of fluid flow through a tube and is dependent to the radius r given by the equation Q equals constant uh, r raised to the fourth, by how much uh, will blood flow through an artery be reduced for a sudden three quarters reduction of blood vessel radius? Diba? Bakit to magandang tanong? Kasi remember, Pag nagkakaroon ng mga plaques or nagkakaroon ng block yung mga arteries natin, numinipis yung daanan ng dugo, okay? Which usually result to trans-ischemic attack, no? Or if ever, nagkaka-stroke, no? Parang ganun, no? To, to the brain, no? If ever. Mga ganun. So, may implications at may applications. So, sabi ng general physics 1, no? Apply Bernoulli's equation, principle of continuity, no? So, very important. Actually, tahi-tahi po yung Equation of Continuity and Bernoulli's Principle. Ano pa? Grade 6 math, no? Solve proportions. Grade 9 math, apply fundamental theorems of proportionality. And, uh, of course, this is math, no? So, tahi-tahi din siya. Of course, let's continue. Uh, linear equations, no? Paborito din natin to. Saan natin siya nakikita? Um, let me give an example. I, I took this from this site. So it's a mixture problem using linear equations. Actually, we can look at it two ways. No? Pag mga teacher ka, tingin mo talaga dyan, mixture problem. Pero pag ikaw ay nasa chemistry, di ba? ang tingin natin dyan ay concentration problem. No? Uh, concentration meaning concentrations of solutions. 
So in a chemistry lab, a student has two solutions that contain hydrogen chloride and is mixing them. So uh, yung hydrogen chloride magigis ang uh, to magigis ang pa naging solution siya magigis ang hydrochloric acid. No, one solution is 15% HCl and the other is 5% HCl. How many ml or what's the volume of each solution that should be mixed to obtain 100 ml of an 8% HCl solution? So naging solution na siya, no? so hydrochloric acid na siya. So pwede tina yung solution and if you do the math, sabi nga, we try to get the answer as 30, per, uh, 30 ml of the 15% HCl and 70 ml of the 5% HCl. So Dito, dito na apply na natin siya. Of course, yung bata marunong dapat mag-create ng equations uh, based on the understanding of the problem. Doon pumapasok yung kahirap, nahihirapan yung iba kasi hindi nila ma-express into equations yung problem. So, yun, doon tayo dapat pumasok. Of course, yung kinematics equations natin, actually hindi lang siya linear, but uh, we also have, uh, pwede rin gawin yung quadratic. No? So, may mga kinematics equations tayo. Dalawa yan, yung nasa taas, yung ating mga nasa linear motion, no? technically, uh, na, like horizontal or vertical. So, ginagamit natin yan sa free fall din. Uh, if we change, palitan natin yung notation na unti. Pero technically, we can use this for constant acceleration. No? Uh, yung nasa baba is for constant angular acceleration. So, ito yung mga uniformly accelerated motions. So, these are the equations which we, which we can work with. And ang isa lang tatandaan natin is, number one, I mean, isa lang tatandaan natin is, constant yung acceleration. Yung sa taas, no, linear, and yung sa baba, yung angular acceleration niya. If you will notice, if you will scrutinize the form, they are the same. Iba lang yung notation kasi angular yung form yung sa baba, uh, linear yung form yung nasa taas. Diba? Uh, actually, nakikita ko po ito sa mga learner's material po ng mga bata natin. As early as grade 9, nagsosolve na po sila nito. Actually, uh, lower than grade 9. No? Grade 8, meron na silang motion. Pag grade 9, may projectile na sila, nagde-derive na sila ng projectile equations. Pero walang sense sa bata yung pag-derive. Kasi hindi niya naiintindihan yun. Okay? Um, I will share. Uh, I took this from, del flexible ideas naman tayo, flexible learning. Meron po akong Facebook group na ginagamit ko rin sa klase, close group siya, uh, private group siya. Nag-upload ako doon ng mga solutions sa mga exams na ginagawa or tinitake ng mga sudyante ko para makita nila kung paano ko na-solve. Especially yung hindi nila na-solve. Okay, so for example, no October 10, binigyan ko sila nitong problem that I took from, actually from Holt, from Holt Physics, and I solved it here, and I posted my answer uh, in their Facebook group. And yun, kasi hindi daw nila na-solve yung EPs. It's actually about the cockroach, no? Yung dalawang cockroach separated by a distance 60 centimeters. Yan. So sinagotan ko lang siya sa papel, tapos pinicturean ko. Ayan. Pwede naman natin gawin yan, ano? Okay. Of course, sino ba naman ang makakalimot na magandang example ng linear equations or systems of linear equations ng ano no, Kirchhoff's rules. No, this is Gustav Kirchhoff. So, eto yung kinakatakutan ng ibang majors. Pero in essence, ang mga major they understand the Kirchhoff's laws, yung current and voltage rules or law. No, naiintindihan nila yon, no? That pag meron kang junction, lahat ng pumasok, yun din yung lalabas. At pag meron kang loop Whatever the voltage rise is equal to the voltage drop. Naiintindihan ng bata yon or ng mga learners. Pero pag binigyan mo na sila ng ganyan and they have to work, they have to work with the equations to solve for unknowns, oftentimes they don't get the answer. Diba? For example, given yung values ng uh, resistances of resistor 1, 2, and 3 and uh, the voltages um, of the EMF sources E1 and E2, pwede natin gawin yung ating equations or i-write yung ating equations, basta tatandaan lang natin, di ba, dapat yung sum ng lahat ng currents is zero, meaning lahat ng pumasok equal sa lahat ng lumabas. Ganun din sa voltage or sa loop rule, yung voltage rise equal sa voltage drop. Actually, ang isang difficulty dito is the sign. Di ba, laging issue yung sa sign pag sa math, uh, pag nung bata pa tayo, hindi natin makuha kasi it's either the negative or the positive. May raming bata nagkaka-issue doon. Pero here, Clear naman, more or less clear sa kanila, given naman yung convention. Nahirapan sila pag pinagpatong-patong na nila yung mga equations, actually. Alright. So, here are the competencies. These are MELC competencies. That's why hindi ko na kinuha lahat, no? Uh, mga MELC competencies, mga MELCs lang. Like, solving your equations, grade 7, math, 
solve problems involving systems of linear equations, grade eight, no? Uh, determine solutions of systems, that's with uh, SHS STEM, um, pre-calculus, no? And meron tayong general physics, no? Kasi pasok dyan yung mga sis, uh, linear equations for free fall. Apply principles of stoichiometry for Gen Chem 1. And for Gen Phi 2, yung Kirchhoff's Laws. So pwede natin siyang tahi-tahiin. Okay, let me continue. Another concept that I would like to show na pwede natin pagsimulang pag-usapan sa mga science and math is rational algebraic expressions. One good example is when we talk about resistors and capacitor connections or circuits. No, um, The one at the, that I'm showing right now is, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, a set of resistors connected, no, uh, na vary, no, may naka-series, may naka-parallel. So, if you want to calculate um, the equivalent resistance, di ba, usually kinakalculate natin yan, we redraw this to, to a simple circuit na marirepresent ng isang R equivalent. Pero pag nasa parallel, we have to realize na pwede natin siyang ibigay as um, yung R equivalent can be given as 1 over R equivalent is equal to the uh, the sum of the inverses of all the resistances of all uh, the resistors connected in parallel. Di ba? Yun. Sa, sa, sa capacitors naman, baliktad. So, kapag series naman sila naka-inverses. Alright. So, for grade, uh, for SHS Gen Math, distinguishes rational functions, rational equations, and rational inequalities. And for grade 8 and 9 mathematics, solve problems involving rational algebraic equations. So, pwedeng pwede na itong ipasok kasi meron na pong circuits ang grade 8. Ang grade 8 po, uh, alam nating lahat na ang grade 8, ang grade level na kumpleto ang science uh, ng physics, no? Anim ang lessons or modules ng physics sa grade 8. So, kumpleto yun from force to electricity, sound, light, ter uh, yeah, kumpleto siya. Heat, kumpleto po siya. Kaya, ang daming points of convergence doon. Okay, quadratic equations, although nabangit ko ito kanina, we can look at it in population densities, uh, kinetics, no, equilibrium and chemistry, and of course, kinematics and physics. So, biochem physics. For example, no, you want to calculate the population density. Diba? Um, for example, in ecosystems, when you study ecosystems, we really have to do this. No? Ayan. So, bibisan ko na kasi 10 minutes na lang. Ayan. All right. So, of course, linear and quadratic functions. Okay, so I just yung mga example na ideal and real gases solutions, chemical equilibrium, enzyme kinetics. Ayan. Example din po na no, binibigay ko usually sa test ito. No, for example, calculate the work done directly proportional to the the natural logarithm of v two over v one and the r or the universal gas constant. Nakikita natin ng ln o natural logarithm dyan, usually pag meron tayo isothermal processes sa thermodynamics. Of course, no, logarithmic and exponential equations. Okay, saan magagamit? Actually, halos lahat, no? Uh, even earth sciences, when we discuss the geologic time, and of course, stratifications, uh, stratigraphy, no, in rocks, we talk about uh, relative and absolute dating of rocks, which include radioactivity, or half-life, no, specifically. So, examples. Ano examples? Ayan, no, decay, no? Ano pinakita pinapakita ko dito? Decay um yung pagdecay nung ha, sa based on half-life ng carbon 14 which is used uh, for uh, archaeological studies as well as for dating, no? Uh, mga archaeological finds natin. And of course, cobalt 60, no? Cobalt 60 is very important for those having uh, treatments ng cancer, no? Yung teletherapy machine na cobalt 60 machine, cobalt 60 ginagamit noon. So, alam mo yung application talaga pag nakikita ng bata. For me, uh, bilang isang learner, I, I think it will spur my interest more in, in doing the math. Okay. For example, also, I gave this in my class, barium 122. Uh, Ginagamit ito sa mga imaging, imaging techniques, yung mga barium. Okay. So, for example lang naman yan. And of course, the intensity of sound, di ba? We have to remember that sound is, the, uh, the decibel notation is logarithmic in nature, di ba? This is a good example uh, for logarithm. Of course, pH, no? Uh, grade 7, alam na ng bata ang pH. Pero hindi pa ng bata masyadong gets na ang pH ay logarithmic. So pH is a logarithm, uh, logarithmic function of hydronium ions, no? Di ba yung pH 7, di ba pure water, di ba yung mga ganon? Tapos kapag nasa baba, yung mga acidic, 
like for example, HCL or uh, uh, rain, coffee, sa taas naman yung mga soapy solutions, yan. So this is a good integration point. Uh, these are some examples. I'll move past them. Of course, no work done in an isothermal volume change, no? So natural logarithm ito, no? So thermodynamics and sa thermochem. Of course, in biology, we have to highlight this part here, which is the exponential growth phase of bacteria, for example, or colonies of certain cells that you actually culture. Diba? So important sa atin yun na ang pag-grow ng culture ay hindi linear. It's actually exponential. No? So ayan, ito yung mga milks na nandun. Represents real uh, situations using exponential functions and so on and so forth. Ang dami, no? Um, at yung mga mathematics milks para isupport yung ating pag-aaral ng uh, logarithmic and exponential functions with science. So series expansion binomial theorem. Okay, example. Uh, I took this uh, question. It's a challenge problem from uh, Resnick and Holiday. O, oh, di ba? Binomial theorem. Pero sa nanggagaling? Sa punto de vista ng relativity. And may relativity tayo sa grade 12 general physics 2. So, pwede nating pag-harmonize yun. Plane angles, solid angles, and plane figures. Di ba? For example, light no, in optics, dynamics, and kinematics. Examples lang po. Similar triangles. I remember nung tayo nagsisimula, nung nag-aaral pa ako sa, sa high school, shout out pala sa mga teachers ko nung high school na nanonood. Um, Di ba tinatanong tayo sa earth science yung about kay Eratosthenes when he studied the circumference of the earth? Di ba? In essence, that's, uh, well, the, the math there is very, very heavy, no? I mean, it's a point of integration for math, di ba? Similar triangles, no? So, special topics pa rin natin siya, no? Uh, pasok pa rin yung ginawa ni Eratosthenes when he calculated the circumference of the Earth, which is which is barely equal, no? I mean, not, not barely, but malapit din, no? Sa katotohanan yung ginawa niya, no? In other words, maganda yung ginawa niya. And then here, no? Uh, nakalagay yan sa grade 9, no? To apply theorems to show that given triangles are similar and even in grade 5. And then also here, no? Um, I find it important na si teacher dapat dinederive niya ang thin lens equation or ang mirror equation. Hindi dapat niya binibigay lang yung equation. Okay? Now, if you will do this derivation by highlighting similar triangles, for example, the triangles uh, ABC, and triangles ADE, then you can actually, well, derive here, no, yung ating thin lens equation, which is in essence a rational algebraic ex expression or algebraic equation. So, yun, no, in grade 9 math, we apply theorems for these triangles. Sa nakikita natin sa science, sa grade 10, physical science, and even sa physics 2, sa optics. Saan pa po? Uh, I took this from sciencedirect.com. Yung Doppler effect, no? Yung sa sound and even yung sa optical Doppler effect, no? I'll just show you the picture, di ba? Na kung titignan mo yung mga wave fronts, yung mga, yung mga radius nun, no? Pwede mong i-relate doon sa lines that form or the, 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 the legs that form uh, one side or one part of the triangle. Uh, you can look for this. It's a very interesting read using, um, uh, what's this? Using principles uh, in math, specifically uh, similar triangles. Yun, no? Nabanggit ko na. Okay, frequency for Doppler effect. And yun, Doppler effect pa yan sa physical science. Ayan. Hindi natin tinatanggal yung areas and volumes kasi important sa atin yun. Uh, apart from measurement, for example, you're given a graph. We have to remember that we, if we have an acceleration versus time graph, the area would actually give us a change in velocity, no? Yung, yung bound, no? Yung bound area ng curve. And then also, if you have a V versus T graph, that gives you the change in position. So very important. Malaman lang yun ng bata. This is already a powerful tool. Okay? And of course, trigonometric and circular functions. Ayan, yung mahal na mahal nating sine curve. Trigonometric identities when we do, um, let's say, uh, yung sa may kinalaman sa forces. Okay? Sa mechanics, waves, optics, electricity, magnetism. Yung binigay ko, it's in a pendulum, no? Yung pendulum bob nagsiswing, uh, the length is L. So you can see the weight of the pendulum. Uh, the pendulum bob is here. But at this point, you see the interaction of the vectors, no of the vector, na meron siyang 
uh, components along a certain X and a certain Y. Okay? And that uh, certain um, component along the Y will uh, is actually at an angle theta with respect to the actual weight. Of course, sine and cosine law. No, I, I got this for biology. No, like for example, when you talk about footprints, no, uh, they call it the step angle, which is a measure of walking efficiency. Okay, and of course, conic sections. Patapos na po yung examples to. Ayan, conic sections, astronomy, gas laws. Ano example ko specific? Siyempre si Kepler, no, mahal na mahal natin si Kepler. Nasa general physics ito, nandun ito sa physical science ng core, core subject ng senior high school, at nasa lower grades din siya kasi pinag-uusapan na rin natin ng astronomy sa baba. Di ba? Yung three laws of planetary motion ni Kepler, in essence, di ba, we study ellipses, we study, um, yeah, we study conic sections. So ayun, no, sa STEM pre-calculus, Meron tayong circles, ellipses, parabolas, hyperbolas, and recognize equations. Tapos meron tayo nun sa physical science at meron tayo sa GP1. And of course, sabi ko nga, spiraled across junior high school science. Vectors, no? Paborito din natin to. Um, dapat naiintindihan ng bata yung vector. I'm not going to talk about, you know, biological vectors. So I'm going to talk about physical vectors in the ones that we use in physics. So operations on vectors, no dot, cross products. Examples, defining work as a, as a vector, uh, as a, uh, it's actually a scalar product, no? And then torque as a, as this, a vector product. Then, of course, force exerted by a charge on a magnetic, uh, by a magnetic field. Examples lang po ito. Ayan, ano ang punto de vista ng aking pinagsasabi? Actually, had I, had I you know, pag magkaroon pa ako siguro na maraming time, gusto ko pa itong mas aralin kasi gusto ko mag-offer on a plate Ano ang pwede nating pag-usapan? Ano ang convergence or talking points natin? We have to converge all of these things. We have to converge science and math. Bakit? And after some time, we have to observe harmony. Because in essence, they are actually the same. They are actually the same. It's like looking at two things and seeing it differently or telling the story differently but telling the essence of the story in the same way. So um, I would like uh, towards the end, no? I got this uh, from an article uh, by Shirei and... Ang sabi niya dito, we have to inter, well, interconnect traditionally isolated mathematics, science, and technology subjects by engaging in, in the engineering design challenges. Ano pinagawa niya as outcomes or output sa bata? Tinan niyo, design a portable microscope for a field identification of pathogens on plant life. Ano yung math content? Anong science content? And ano yung engineering and technology content? Um, wala tayong output na nag-exclude ng skill. Wala tayong output na nag-exclude ng content actually. For example, kitang-kita nyo naman dito yung math content and science content. Similarly, if you want to ask them design a food waste system to max, uh, minimize lost food and energy, tingnan natin, meron pa rin siyang math content and science content. So very integrative siya. Yun siguro yung gusto natin i-push forward sa ating pag-uusap na ito. So before I end, no, like few slides, uh, papasalamatan ko lang po ang Philippine Normal University for allowing me to do this. Um, the National Center for Teacher Education, yung, I mean, yung lahat ng, nag, ng tumulong din po. And yung math methods team po namin and some uh, professors who helped me out on this talk. And of course, shout out ko po lahat ng Bicolano, 4A, and NCR teachers. Sobra ko pong love ang 5, 4, at NCR. To end, ganyan po natin nakikita ang science and math. Ganyan din po nakikita ng bata ang science and math. Compartmentalize. Ano yung natutunan mo sa science? Doon lang yung sa science. What did you learn in math? Doon yung sa math. Pero dapat the math should cross the interface and the science should cross the interface. Hindi ito mangyayari sa bata lang. We have to allow this to happen. So that if we do this, we would allow for investigation, innovation, and sustainability. Yun ang gusto natin makuha ng bata. Um, ano ang direksyon ng math? Ang direksyon ng math now is on inquiry. Okay. Ang math now is moving forward no, and embracing the ideas of inquiry as well, just like what we do in the sciences. I would like to share, uh, to, to, to thank Dr. Shirley Monterol of UP College of Ed for sharing me this uh, information. And ano yung parang gusto kong sabihin? Sa, sa dinami-dami ng sinabi ko, I, I think on our end as science and math teachers, let's stop first, let's think, let's talk with each other, let's listen to each other, and let's act as one. And then we repeat. Tigil ulit, isip, talk, listen, and act. We do this cyclically or we, we can, you know, move around. 
the point is we have to listen to each other. Uh, STEM is not science, technology, engineering, mathematics. STEM should be as one. Especially in the higher grades, we should look at STEM as STEM. We should not look at it as, I'm just teaching math, I'm just teaching science. Maaral nyo na yan sa math, maaral to science. No. Uh, what if we try to merge these things for better outputs, for better outcomes, for our, for our learners, no? Yeah. So I, I guess that will be my key takeaway. We have to be one. Uh, wag na tayo masyadong, math teacher po ako, physics major po ako. No, let's, let's be one. Uh, because at the end of the day, the flexible learning delivery, whatever you do, your SLMs, they will be for the kids. And we're trying to adapt. Okay? So I, I guess, yon. Let's, let's push forward for STEM as one. So yon. maraming salamat po sa Castro and Dep Ed Mandaluyong. Uh, patuloy po tayong tutulong sa mga future endeavors, especially on SIP. Uh, salamat po. That will be all. Sir. Okay, maraming maraming salamat sa Alphonse for that very detailed uh, discussion about yung mga applications natin. Alam mo sir, nung dinidiscuss mo yan, naalala ko nung nag-aaral pa ako sa City of Mandalo yung Science High School. Wow. May physics <laughs> kami ron, regular. Na regular, tsaka advanced physics. Physics, oh, oh. si Ma'am Roxana ay aking... Teacher, uh, si hindi ko masyadong yung teacher, pero yeah, yeah. Teacher siya ron sa medyo... Pero, sir, di ba? Yes, sir. Pero, pero diba, you, we realize na pag nakita natin yung convergence points, na-realize natin yung importance ng digital tools. Kasi, uh, yes, yung mga pinag-usapan natin na skills, nag, nagsispiral siya, lumalaki siya. We don't talk of simple numbers. Diba, lumalaki siya eh. So, we really need digital tools like calculators, we need emulators, we need we need online tools. Everything that we can use. Yes, diba? walang, walang isa lang. Dapat gamitin natin lahat. Kung ano yung kaya natin at ano yung meron na tayong pwedeng gamitin. Yun. At saka napakaswerte ng mga learners ngayon kasi before, although meron ng mga technological advances, hindi tulad ngayon eh, na talagang ang daming pwedeng gamitin na yeah. bagay. Dati, honestly, hindi po, hindi po ganun ka-allowed yung paggamit ng calculator. Basta sabihin ba, ano ba yan, nawawala yung essence ng math kung gagamit ng calculator. Doon po kasi mga topics, lalo na sa math at sa science, sa kailangan po talagang gamitin, pero hindi naman po laging ginagamit yung ganong uh, bilang bagay. physics so, major sige, bilang physics major ang mga sudyante namin talagang dapat may calculators <laughs> kasi uh, we don't we don't work with just simple numbers di ba in physics so we do trigonometric identities we do you know we do a lot actually so kailangan natin ng calculator sa sa amin uh, bilang physics majors uh, chem chem ang mga chem oo din eh, no Oo. By the way, um, sir, um, kasi I, I like the, there is a Casio calculator. I'm not sure if it's still, if it's already out. Yung may math and science investigation package. And I think sobrang ganda yun nun na point of convergence natin. Kasi magagamit talaga siya in, in doing investigations, may sensor siya. So ang ganda-ganda lang na point of convergence. So parang hindi na dapat... Yung iba kasi, di ba, parang pag nagsashaya away sila kasi di ko naman ituturo yan, hindi ko naman magagamit yan sa science. But let's let's not do that. Let's think na we have to be good in math also kasi nagtuturo tayo ng science and that's part and parcel of science. Yes, yeah, talagang interrelated sila. Tsaka, sir, uh, ako, I, although I'm teaching elementary, sir, itong okay. kasyo kasi has been the partner of SDO Mandalu yung even ng DepEd, talagang meron sila mga resources na pwedeng magamit and accredited naman po talaga ng DepEd. Although, it comes with a package po, halimbawa, yung emulator, meron yung mga sample lesson guided by worksheets and module and teachers, guys. So, si teacher, wala na siyang, gaga wala na siyang gagawin, papalaw niya lang yon We have the emulator. If you can afford to buy that calculator, you can use the emulator. Siguro ito yung kagandahan din ng technology na meron tayo ngayon. Again, sir, Saka, Alphons, maraming... Oh. Sige, sir. Sige, sir. Hindi, saka, kasi, ano ba lang, di, di ba, meron naman tayong mga materials na available. Pero ang kagandahan kasi yes, ng dig digital tools is, pwede kasi natin gamitin yung available na mga, like for example, activities. Pero pwede rin kasi tayo mag-usap-usap bilang mga guro. Pwede tayong gumawa ng bagong activities based on these tools. Diba? Tulad ng tinuro ni Ma'am Red, diba yung kanina, uh, binigyan na ta niya tayo ng starting point. Pero kung mag-uusap-usap tayo bilang community of practice, yung sa school ninyo, when you do your lack sessions, we can actually create more than that, eh, di ba? We can create a pool of materials for using a tool. So, 
hindi siya sure. for one ano lang department kailangan talaga nating mag-usap-usap <laughs> Yes, yeah, so ang ganda ng takeaway mo na talang it's a partnership between two schools kasi in DepEd, we are practicing this uh, school partnership program. For example, you are a school with the best practices. Pukuha ka ng school na pwede mong i-adapt na ma-replicate yung best practices na yun. So talagang yeah. sa DepEd, lalo ngayon sa panahon ngayon, it's a collective effort. Sama-sama tayo, tulong-tulong tayo. Dahil sabi nga ng ating sekretary, education must continue. At sabi rin ng aming SDS sa Mandaluyong, walang may iwan, lahat kasama sa bilang. Again, maraming maraming teachers. salamat sa advance <laughs> for giving your time. Yes. And ang ating time at ang inyong effort to teach and to empower our teachers in Mandaluyong. At itong webinar na ito, hindi lang ito Mandaluyong. Buong Pilipinas nanonood po <laughs> sa atin. Again, sa help, maraming 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 salamat po ulit. Ayan. Salam. So at this point, to deliver his closing remarks, let us all welcome our representative from Casio, Napaka Generous at Napaka Baet, Mr. Joel Serrano. Hello, sir. Hello, hello, sir, buddy. Good, good afternoon. Ah, uh, na. I need to wear my mask. Medyo SOP kasi, you know. Ito sa amin yes, kasiya. So anyway, um, tawag dito. Uh, I am very happy with the presentations today. And on behalf of our mother company, uh, Marius Holdings Corporation, and in cooperation with Casio Japan, we would like to say thank you to the management of Dep at Mandaluyong, led by our SDS, Dr. Romela M. Cruz. Very energetic si ma'am. Uh, and to Dr. Aurelio Alfonso, to your ever pretty chief, uh, Ma'am Aline Mendoza, na nakasama ko yan for several years na rin. And very supportive yan sa mga activities ng Casio. Uh, to, to the hardworking EPS for mathematics and science, my good friend, Mr. Restituto Rodelas, and to Ma'am Roxanne Millanueva. And of course, last but not the least, to our moderator for today, Mr. Salvador Buds Manansala, the first. <laughs> we are very elated with this project and let's say thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity for us to showcase and to share our math and science, to share to our math and science teachers our available online teaching online apps that they can utilize for their online teaching this year in the midst of this uh, pandemic situation. No? And I would like to say thank you to our Casio Technical Teachers for today, uh, Mr. Jason Alphonse uh, Perigone from PNU and Ms. Redeline Dumul from University of Santa Tomas. Uh, if you will ask me what makes our calculator uh, emulator different from a regular free applicator, uh, calculator apps on it, siguro majority of the Filipino mathematics teachers are using it already. Since sa mga previous trainings namin, they find it very useful in relation to the current curriculum, be it science or be it for mathematics. And may mga unique functions din ang Casio, like uh, the spreadsheet or uh, what we call it, the Excel. No, They can use it for their mathematics subjects. And we also have the, yung pinakita ni Ma'am Redeline Kalina, it's called QR code. It is designed for cloud discussions. Aside from the aside from that, actually, yung pinakapaborit ko sa lahat ng functions ng emulator is yung factorization. No, alam naman natin, medyo challenging topic yan. Um, you know, I'd like to share lang this uh, simple message. Cassius' mission is to support the teachers make a better classes using a scientific calculator or a, a graphing calculator, and we would like to support them and their students during this online distance learning. And I would like to take this opportunity po lang, sir, buddy, no? Kasi kanina, napansin ko sa mga comments, may mga teachers from uh, from the north, north provinces, tapos from the middle sa mga taga-Bacolod, Imamaylan, and also from the Mindanao area, no? Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity na if you want to bring this kind of activity or webinar to your divisions or to your regional offices, you can invite us, no? Uh, through our official Facebook page, uh, our official FB pages, 
Casio Calculators Philippines.com. Now you can send us email invitation email naman. Again, um, sir buddy, maraming salamat mula sa amin dito sa Casio Education Philippines and uh, we hope to link up with you guys again and let's create a better teaching and learning environment. Maraming maraming salamat. Ayan, thank you, Sir Joel, sa napakagandang mensahe na yan. Alam ko, Sir, ever since umasa ako sa DepEd, DepEd Mandaluyong, talagang kaso, laging nariyan to support our teachers and to empower our uh, learners and the whole teachers in the country. Again, Sir Joel, maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Buddy Ulet. Ayan. In the new normal, teachers should transform how they teach online, especially since online tools and resources present numerous affordances that teachers and students can take advantage of. More importantly, the new normal in education is calling us once more to review and meet other essential conditions that need to be met before diving into teaching and learning. Let us not forget Maslow before Bloom which remains to be an important prerequisite if we want to have impactful learning in students, even in times of pandemic. Education is not the work of teachers alone. Collaborations and partnership play crucial roles in sustaining learning at this time of pandemic. Teachers, parents, school leaders, and external partners have to work together to address the many challenging issues of remote learning. In the end, collaboration makes life challenges not necessarily easier, but more bearable. Once again, I'm your moderator for this webinar session, Mr. Salvador E. Manansala I. First, nagsasabi, sama-sama tayo, tulong-tulong tayo sa pagsulong ng isang edukalidad sa bansang Pilipinas. Maraming maraming salamat po at mag-ingat po tayong lahat.